All right. Hello, hello. Good to see everybody. Welcome in. Welcome in. There we go. Getting started in just a few minutes. Welcome in. Sorry, we're getting stuff. We're now streaming this on live. So you guys are waiting. We got the timer here. We're going to start in just a few or right there. There we go. Starting in a few minutes. Say what's up to everybody. If you guys can type in where you're calling in from, answer the poll. If you guys are watching on like Facebook or YouTube or somewhere else, come over to the Zoom room. We're going to make it a big party in here. So um, if you guys can, uh, and when you comment, make sure you comment to everyone, not just hosts and panelists so that everyone can see your comments. But feel free to um, answer that poll uh, in, the, in the group there and we'll get started in a few minutes. I'm going to share my screen. And I know that video was breaking for you guys. Let's try it again here. Here we go. Okay, we'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. Just to rewrite history, cause I'm in the mood to Label us the leaders of the leaders of the new school This ain't for the radio, can't find this on YouTube This the type of killing that these critics say used to Victorious 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 in this day and age, I got time for innovation Time to be creative, time too big to waste So my time on critics ain't Flattered by your opinions to show you I'll just embrace it Now watch a worldly sunrise up No daylight savings go nuts when I have to Glaze back my sound in this beats on the house that we dreaming Watch me way back up in the gas when my thoughts are distorted Cause I recall guys were hating Uncommonly all of them became common denominators Hold up Try to overlook a rival Cause I got no competition Now looking at an idol You're doing long enough to pay for my attention Man, it's the gospel for the black sheep I guess it got a banging ring to it Quiet with triumph on the rap lead So all of you mother can sing to it I was born to be glorious Most definitely glorious to be glorious, the one I hate that displayed to remain warriors. I was born to be glorious, most definitely glorious. I'm destined to be glorious. Avoided by the statistics, occasionally we'll quit it. Made reality visits, but it was too hard to live it. Built on my confidence and delivered. Now I be burning these critics, cause they ain't know they was walking their course while burning they bridges. Hold up. Man, whoever thought I'd be rapping The family ain't never think that can happen Matter of fact, only person that never pushed me to get out Was my mother and the only reason was cause sucking tracks Heard that comments, that shit that you put a ring on And by the looks at your life, guess she's a cling on It's on me, dudes had they lead on the board But games change over time, so I even the score Young is it up, learn how to step it up Plus to be shafted up, set it up City they wrapped enough, giving the rest to us Going off, so of course, baby was shown to throw it off
are the crazy 1% who believes they can change the world. The crazy 1% who stop at nothing. And what's crazy enough about the crazy 1% is they're actually the ones who change the world. I wanted to have like, regular people or people like you guys to have access to the same thing that I had access to. I mean, it's just like what Tony Robbins says, proximity is power. This event is insane. The quality of person that you'll meet at Fun Launch Live is second to none. What is up, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome in. We're getting started in a minute 36. Uh, good to see everybody. Welcome on. If you guys can hit the poll, um, that actually gives us some cool data on who's on this call. Um, curious where you know where you guys are calling. Actually, so the poll, first off, the first poll question is what industry are you in? Right now, we got real estate at 36%, private equity, uh, 26, hedge funds, 37, debt, 13, other uh Oh, excuse me. I say on the percentage wrong. 26, 14, five, and then 19, which is pretty awesome. Hit that poll real quick for me. I'm going to launch a new poll in like five seconds. So you better hit that poll right now. <laughs> um, we'll get moving here in about, we got a, we're less than a minute away. We're going to go, uh, we're going to be live here. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'm end that poll. Three, two, one. Polls ended. I'll share those results with everybody. I think you guys can see them now. There you go. So real estate, 35%, 26, 16, four, and then night. I, sorry, I should have said just like none or like, Hey, I don't, I have no idea, which is totally fine. If you have no clue what fund you want to do or what you're doing, that's totally fine as well. It's, I just like to see kind of where people are at. It's usually kind of a pretty, uh, pretty good spread right here. All right. Um, all right, let me do my next poll. Curious actually how many, um, how many of you guys have been on a live call with me before? So if you have been on like once, twice, three, four, five, like five plus drop it in the chat or in the poll there. Um, we do our webinars a little different than other people. <laughs> Some people like you go on a finance webinar, they're usually very dry, very boring. Um, very, uh, what, do you, what would you say, Mace? I don't know. Just play. Yeah. We, we like to have a lot of fun. We give away money. We're going, we go fast. I talk very fast. There's our timer. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. You guys hit the poll. Let me end poll here. Let's see what you guys got. Share results. 51% of you guys, this is your first time ever on a live call with me. So welcome on. Um, well, if this is your first time. This is going to be a hoot. I promise you, we go very fast. We're very efficient with your time. I know your time is very valuable. So we're not going to sit here and try to like pitch you and do some weird thing. Like I want to give you guys lots of value, lots of content and lots of cool stuff today. Does that sound good? And uh, I know your time's valuable. My time's very valuable as well. I wouldn't come on and do this if I was just to waste someone's time. So we're here. We're going to go all out. Um, just so you're aware, we do a lot. We have a lot of fun on these calls. We do a lot of cool stuff. So behind the scenes, I got Mason Brains, my co-founder. He's um, here as well. And then also today, we have about 10 guests coming on live over the next little bit. They're going to be talking a lot of these guests. Actually, well, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll, we'll actually get to that. I've actually built out slides here. But there, a lot of these guests for me, they manage uh, multi-billion dollar funds, um, 100 plus million dollar organizations. They manage hundreds of employees and people from around the world. They're coming on today. And the, the main question I'm going to ask them is how are you preparing your fund or business for a recession? What are you doing right now to prep and move when it could be their business and or their personal finances to prep for the upcoming, you know, kind of or current recession, depending on how you view things. Um, it's funny, I've, I, on this show, I sit here and I interview a lot of people that run huge organizations or, you know, have billions of dollars they manage. What's funny is a lot of them keep referencing how they made their money during the last crash or the dot-com bubble. That's when they made all their money. And you would not believe the level of optimism I get to see in their eyeballs. Like they're like, dude, right now we have been waiting for this for three or five years. We are, and you, it's weird because most people are really scared during recession. Like what's going to happen? We can talk about the US dollar today. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. And they're all scared. And these guys, you, it's funny, these guys and gals that sit across, you could, it's weird almost the level of optimism they have, which is pretty fun. So you're gonna be able to hear from all these guests coming on today, which is pretty cool. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Now, for people, it's your first time. So 51%, you guys don't know how we do things. We're actually gonna do, to kick things off, we're gonna do a $100 giveaway to what? Amazon, Mace, like Amazon? 
Amazon, $100 giveaway to Amazon just because why not? It's a freaking Thursday. Here we are. So if you guys can in the chat type, uh, yes, just type yes in the chat. Yes in the chat. And I'm going to pick somebody live. Make sure in the chat, you type it to everyone, not just hosts and panelists. Make sure you type it to everyone. It like defaults to hosts and panelists for whatever reason. So type to everyone. Um, and I'm going to pick somebody. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, there's a lot of people on here. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Neil Lester. Neil Lester, congrats. You got $100 to Amazon. We're like two minutes into this thing. You already want hundred bucks. So Neil Lester, congrats. If, uh, if you can send your email and a private message to Mason, um, he will send you like a virtual gift card for hundred bucks to Amazon. So there you go. Pretty fun. Um, all right, let's dive in. First off, results disclaimer before I say anything else, uh, where I'm sharing today is my personal opinion. We're not uh, having giving financial advice, tax advice. Um, we're not soliciting or selling securities today. Our results are unusually high with our group and our students and all that kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to make that disclaimer for everyone. Everyone in the chat, can you guys say, I am disclaimed, okay? <laughs> now, if you haven't noticed already, I like to get participation on the chat. Um, just set some ground rules. Um, I, I do it because it's fun and stuff, but also psychologists tell us if we show up to an, something like this and we just kind of listen in the background or put an ear AirPod in or something, we remember about 0% of what we hear. Zero. If you actually actively listen and sit down and take notes and stuff, you remember two to about 5%. If you actually engage, if you're speaking, talking, using your physical body, that number jumps from five to about 15 to 20% of the content you'll remember and retain long-term, which is pretty cool. So the reason I know it's, it's, it might be gimmicky or like, oh, it's so dumb. The reason I do like, Hey, say in the chat or let's do giveaways. It's to help you get more engaged. It's hard to be virtual. I love live events because we can do stuff in person, but virtually we have to, we have to have some fun, but I, I want to get you guys, if you're going to spend valuable time being here, I would feel so bad if you came and only remember 2% of what you learned here. I, I want to get to that 15 or 20%. Sound good. You guys with me? So if you can type in 20% in the chat, let's get everyone to remember 20% long-term we're doing here. And again, I do this kind of stuff to just help us be more engaged and, and with us here. Sound good? All right, let's dive in. So um, real quick on me, I don't, I'm not here to talk about myself, but it's good to know who you're talking to. So my name is Bridger Paintson. Started two investment funds in my 20s. Um, whole story where I, I actually didn't know my dad. Uh, we grew up in a pretty normal house. I went to my dad's business partner. I started these businesses in college and come to find out my dad and his partner were managing some pretty large investment funds. At the time, they were managing over $8 billion of real estate around the country and around the world. And I was blown away. And I, and I asked this guy to be my mentor. My dad said, my, he says, go talk to your dad. Your dad knows way more about than I do. I said, no, my dad's kind of poor. We're kind of broke. I want to learn from you. And this guy lived in this huge, big house, had nice cars, everything. And he's like, Bridger, um, sorry to break it to you, but me and your dad make about the same amount of money. And <laughs> my chin dropped to the floor. I was like, huh? C come again? He's like, yeah, me and your dad are pretty much equal business partners. And I, I left the dude's house, went straight to my dad's house. And long story short, yes, my dad, they were managing these multi-billion dollar funds. I think today those, my dad's now since retired, but they're over $40 billion they manage today, which is a lot of people, you know, you guys know Grant Cardone, they manage about 4 billion, I think four and a half billion. That's 10 times bigger than Cardone Capital. Now, nothing against Grant. I love Grant stuff. And, and actually we have somebody, a guest coming on today that you guys are going to see from his team, which is awesome. But um. Pretty crazy, right? And so long story short, my dad started to teach me about funds. I learned about funds. And at 22 years old, I launched my very first fund out of college. And I put this whole fund together. We're doing debt. I went and pitched my dad for money. My dad said, no, <laughs> it's a big tough love moment between me and my dad. And still to this day, my dad has never invested in a, in a fund or any kind of project or something I've done before ever. But he's taught me incredible lessons on how to go raise money, how to build a fund, how to structure. Been a great mentor and coach. So I launched that first fund. It did incredibly well. Um, we we got a 64% return to our investors. We then launched a second fund. I ran that for three and a half years. Did very, very well. Multi double digit returns. It was incredible. We then actually had a competitor come in and buy that fund out. And then just recently, we just launched our third fund in crypto called Ugly Unicorn. Um which uh, we just raised me and a partner, Dan Young. We, we raised $10 million in our initial launch. Launched is, it's done actually very well so far. Um, we're just coming up on a year mark right now. It's been amazing. Now, during this time period, a lot of people came and asked myself, um, hey, Bridger, you, you know, you have your dad. Also, my brother is an investment funds attorney, has worked on some of the largest funds in the world as an attorney. So between the three of us, we have this really cool kind of dynamic and none of us went to Harvard, none of us went to Ivy League schools, et cetera but we've learned this really cool vehicle of funds. And so we started to put together content and resources and then coaching groups and courses and stuff to help more people learn about funds and to help more people understand this game of funds. And so that's what this company fund launch, you can see on my shirt right here, fund launch has grown into. Um, we now have over 55,000 
thousand people that have taken our course around the world, which is bonkers. Like when you start a course, you hope like, well, maybe like a hundred people will take it or 150 or maybe, maybe 200. We're at 55,000 people have gone through our course on funds. And we just give one of our courses, we just give out for free because we just want to help more people learn about this game. And then yes, we've, we've helped now last year, we helped 120 funds launch out of our group, which is incredible. We actually on stage at Fun Launch Live, we give away these shoes. These are our award. They're called the Wall Street Rebel Award. This is if any fund that raises over $10 million gets a custom pair of sneakers and their name on it and everything. It's pretty cool. Um, and we just, and, and this year uh, we're at Fun Launch Live. I think we're going to have what? I don't know, 30 to 45 winners on stage, which is just insane, which is so cool. So this is kind of what we put together. And Mason's my co-founder on Fun Launch. We've done this, this really cool thing. Anybody by in the chat? Anybody gone through our course, whether it's our free course paid, any, anybody in the chat? Anybody has done that before? I'm just curious if you guys have been there. Um, we've done a lot there. This is my, this is Mason right here. Picture of him. I'm just on stage running a cool award uh, for our company, which is awesome. Um, this is our online social media presence. Just if you guys follow us, we put out a lot of cool content on that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go quick as you guys can tell. And we have our first guest coming on in four minutes. Okay. Four minutes. Our first guest is coming on. So it's gonna be pretty fun. This guest, by the way, um, uh, I think bought over $150 million of properties in 18 months at 27 years old, which is insane. So he's coming on in about four minutes. So this is Fun Launch Live last year. Um, we had 1,200. By the way, anybody in the chat come to Fun Launch Live last year? It was bonkers. This is our first event. We sold out this event about 30 days before 1,200 people live in Las Vegas, which was amazing. Um, last year, we actually surveyed all the attendees of Fun Launch. Anyways, for $100, take a guess what the number one thing they loved most about Fun Launch Live. We surveyed our entire 1,200 people for $100 to what? Nike? Let's do Nike, Mace. $100 to Nike. What's the number one thing they love most about FHL or FLL? In the chat. I love it. You guys hit it right there. Some of you guys have heard me say this like last week, but networking. I'll give it to, there's a bunch of people that have the answer. So I'll just give it to uh, Colin Bagley. Colin Bagley got $100 to Nike, okay? The number one thing was the people they met at the event. They're like, dude, I've, I've been to a bunch of business conferences, other stuff. First off, the content we put on stage was super unique. It's just for funds. It's like, these are people that run funds, that manage billions of dollars, that are trying to raise capital or maybe even start like a small fund of $200,000 to go flip a house, right? We have all sorts of types of people, but the people that come to Fund Launch Live are a different type of breed of human. People like us that come on a Thursday webinar that want to learn about funds. You go to Thanksgiving dinner with your aunt and she's like, what in the world is a fund, right? <laughs> she's like, what's a hedge fund? And like, they don't understand our universe, but it's cool to get like our family, our community together in one spot. And so, um, which is pretty cool. So good job calling a bunch of other guys that put it together. You got a hundred dollars to, um, but the network of the people they met, the people sitting to the right and left of them was the biggest thing. And I think there's so much value in shaking hands and talking to somebody face to face, um, at an event like this. So, um, now today's agenda is thus, I already kind of mentioned this. We have 10 minute guest interviews. We have people coming in very quickly. We're actually going to open up Q and A. So you guys can come on and actually ask them questions as well. Hopefully we have only 10 minutes. So it's quick. So type the questions in the chat. We'll try to get through them very efficiently. The one question I want to ask all of them though, is how are you prepping during a recession? What are you doing here? Um, uh, we were doing live Q and A during that whole time period. Additionally, I think like eight out of the 10 uh, speakers have gifts for people that are live today. They have like backend PDF forms or spreadsheets or like a, like books that they want, that they've written or have like that has changed their life. They're going to give for free to people live today in the webinar, which is pretty cool. Okay. So type like a boo, like a booyah in the chat for me. That's pretty cool. Right. Um, all these, all these speakers that manage, you know, huge amounts of funds and do all sorts of cool stuff, um, are coming on to give you guys some really cool gifts. Actually, some of the gifts, um, we actually, one of them, we paid, how much did we pay for that one? $15,000. It was like a course that we bought years ago that changed me and Mason's live. He's actually giving it the recordings of the whole thing today away for free on the call. One of the speakers, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, we are also announcing two new speakers to fund launch live. Uh, one of these speakers, they manage over a billion dollars of retail funds. One of the most well-known funds on planet earth. Uh, I think a lot of you guys will know the name. We'll, we'll announce him in just a few minutes here. Should be pretty fun. Does that sound like a good agenda for today? Yeah. All right. It's gonna be pretty fun. Um, now we are quick on time here. I'm mean, got one more minute. He's coming on live. So I'm going to go quick. Um, just to give you guys an idea. Our cost, we did a, a webinar about three weeks ago on this. We are spending about $1.2 million on this event, which would be pretty cool. And by the way, today you guys are gonna have a chance to join and come to Fun Launch Live, which is awesome. Um, last year's event, we sold out a month before the event. As of today, I think this morning, Mace, we're like 80, 
83% sold out, 84% sold out of the entire event. And the way we do, we just keep upping ticket prices all the way to $1,000. So tickets are going to $1,000 here in a few weeks. Um, we are selling uh, like crazy. We are on pace to sell out early again this year. And once we're sold out, we're sold out. We like, you can't just add more people because like the fire marshal, the whole thing. So um, we are right on, on point there for today. Now I am right on time, aren't I, Mace? I've got Mason keeping me on time. We have our first guest coming on. You guys ready? So this guest um, is actually someone we've worked with inside of Fun Launch. Um, came in, this guy's an incredible um, uh, Yale grad uh, uh, out of law school. Came and has launched incredible funds. Um, is he ready to go, Mace? Is he ready? Okay. Without further ado, if you guys can't, I know it's virtual, but if you can give a huge round of applause virtually in the chat to Mr. Kaloa Wolfgram. Here he is right here. How he He's going to come on and talk about how he acquired $300 million of real estate in just 18 months, launching their uh, first few funds here. So Kaloa, if you guys can come on live. There he is, Kaloa. How you doing? Hey, doing well. How you doing, Bridger? Kaloa, welcome on, brother. Good to have you here. Um and by the way, uh, well, I have that QR code up right there for Kaloa, just so you guys are aware. Um, anyone that that joins today and buys tickets today, we have. A, I'll talk about it after we're done with Kaloa, but we have some cool discounts and gifts for you guys as well. We'll leave that up there live. But Kaloa, welcome on. If you can give, I know we're, we're quick on time here, give the group and audience about a maybe a 30 to a 30 second to one minute overview of you, your guys' firm, what you guys do. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my, my background was uh, not in finance or investments at all, really, until went to school and uh, started getting involved, started a few companies, sold a few. Uh, in December of 2021, I founded Wolfgram Capital. We're a private equity real estate firm specializing in hospitality. In the last 18 months, we've done 300 million in acquisitions. Our biggest uh, was the Waldorf Astoria, which we bought all cash in Park City, Utah. Jeez, that is unreal. Well, you got to unpack a few things for us. So how, <laughs> walk us through how, like, and, and 18 months ago, were you had you done large syndications or funds before this Never. kind of group or how, so Never. walk us through the story. How'd you even get into this? Yeah. So I was, uh, I was actually working at a, at a, uh, a small clinic that was trying to help other people get started and do things. And so we were working on some of their legal side. And, uh, I, I just saw that the people doing the deals were having all the fun and the lawyers were kind of picking up the slack afterwards and hmm, said, Hey, yeah. let's, let's figure it out. So literally actually started the very first book I bought was a bigger pockets book on flipping by Brandon Turner, like just flipping single family homes. So we we were looking at that, doing that. And then somewhere along the way, someone told me, said, hey, look, flipping like single family homes is great, things like that. Um, but frankly, doing like a bigger deal and doing smaller deals, there's not much different other than the number of zeros. And, and often it's the same amount of effort. I said, mm, okay, yep. well, why don't we get into something a little bit bigger? COVID's hitting, hotel prices are plummeting. Like, let's jump into hotels. I had worked at hotels before. My family had worked in hotels. Um, so we kind of knew the operation side of hotels. So, hey, let's, let's get into hotels, started buying up. And then it, it really took off super fast, uh, much more than we expected. Oh my goodness. So yeah, a few things here now. Um, what's it, just congrats on your success, by the way. How old are you, Kolo? I'm 27. 27, dude. Congrats on your success, man. That's amazing. Um, and, and all you guys have put together. Um, how do you raise that much money at 27 years old? Walk me through that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think there are a couple of things that we think about. Um, we typically do not go after smaller check sizes. So we don't go after really anything under 500K or, or, or 300K. So a lot of it started with finding the right deals. Um, you know, because, because we were in the hotel space already, like we knew a bunch of owners that were interested in selling and said, hey, uh, you know, COVID hit my hotel. Like I can't do anything about that. Um, I want to sell it. And so we, we already had a bunch of like these kind of sweetheart deals just from being in the industry. And once we had the deal in place, uh, we went out to, uh, we actually started with some of the lenders. So we went out to, you know, everyone can find a lender, right? It's pretty easy to find, like, it's pretty easy to get a term sheet from the lender. Like you can just call up your local bank, or credit union. As I started talking to them, we said, hey, by the way, do you also know any investors that are interested in hotels? And, you know, you'd be surprised at how many of them opened some of their books and said, hey, yeah, actually I do know, you know four or five of these other hotel buyers, they'll code GP, they'll do this other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. cool. And then once we did like two or three deals, like doing the first, raising our first $7 million was like a nightmare. Like it took us like six months to do that. Raising the <laughs> yeah. next like 200 was like the e like way easier than raising the first seven. Mm -hmm. So it was really just getting those first ones in place. I love that. And Kaloa, you're in Black Card with us as well. You, you probably heard me preach this like crazy, but when we have, we have so just people that don't know, we have a group called Black Card. It's like our highest group that we like help people launch their funds and everything. And I always preach like, just get started, right? To that same point, the first, your first investor is gonna be the hardest investor you find. There's so much value in getting launched, getting going. And then it kind of rolls into the next things. Kalo, I know we're, we're short on time, so I want to make sure, and we have questions in the Q&A as well. So if you see a good one you like, um, but I, the question I want to ask every speaker, so I want to ask you this first, give you time to answer. 
how are you positioning your fund business and even personal finances for, you know, kind of an economic downturn recession right now? What are you guys doing? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be quick on this. Cause I think it's, I think it's, I think it's fairly simple. I think there's three things. One is our stockpile in cash. So I think the larger board chest wins and things like this, right? It's not a seller's market. Um, so we're, we're actually in the middle of raising our second fund now, which is 250 million and, 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 and much larger than our first one. Um, so that's one stockpiling the cash two is we're just, being super, super conservative on our underwriting. So we're increasing all of our sensitivity. And when we thought, mm. you know, the top end of our underwriting is at you know, 11%, now that's at 15% for interest mm. rates. So we're trying to be real sensitive to that. But then the third, and I think it's actually really, really important if you even have a portfolio, however small, whether personal or or on the business side, is you have to prune the portfolio, right? So mm. just like in trees, right? You, you cut out the bad things. You try to you try to get all the energy going to, um, all, to, to the largest ones. So we're looking at you know, how our tails are doing, where are the ones that have more uh, recession proof, and, and, and let's try to get ahead of that and start to prune the portfolio. So those are the three things that, that we're doing personally. And then also on the, on the business side. Gosh, I love it. Do you, are you guys seeing a lot of deals right now? Or I like, you know, that you guys are in the large, is it commercial real estate or multifamily by the way, or is it, is it hotels mm-hmm. primarily? Is it a mix of all? A mix of all, but primarily like 90% of our portfolio is hotels. Hotels, and it's hotels. Okay. Are you seeing, you know, a lot of people in the real estate markets are, you know, obviously interest rates go up. It prices people out of real estate. It just, and actually a lot of funds, it gives them the opportunity to mm-hmm. come in with, cash and usually cheaper financing and kind of squeeze out the middle guy. That's why funds are amazing. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing a lot of, you know, these deals that are going to be awesome buy up deals? Are you guys, what do you, what's your outtake on the market? Yeah. Do you think the next 18 months, two years, you're going to see more of those? Is it right now? When's the right timing yeah. in your opinion to get in? Yeah. Yeah. So we actually went out in quarter four of last year, we went out and spoke to all the heads of global real estate at all the big investment banks, Bank of America in, in New York, we went with them all the headquarters, you know, Bank of America, Barclays, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, uh, you know, all, literally all of them. And uh, they told us something interesting. They said, look, through 2020, 2021, 2022, we had been a lot of forbearance, specifically for like CMBS loans and those type of stuff. You know, it was like, okay, we get it. It's COVID. Like, you don't have to pay. We'll just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. In quarter four, every single one of them said, we have just mobilized our legal team to start taking back assets, right? To start mm. pushing and saying wow. every single one of them Q4. So we started to see some of that happen now, but because that process, there's a little bit of a lag between like once we say, hey, we're not playing softball anymore and this is hardball. It was about a six to eight month lag. So we're starting, we are starting to see some of those hotels coming up this summer is like when call for offers are. And I think we're starting to see it in the next 18 months um, is what we're really excited about. Hmm, really cool. Interesting. And uh, you know, hotel space, you would, you would think, you know, if somebody's on the outside is like, man, that would be a bad business to be in during a downturn or recession. Less people are traveling, et cetera. How do you guys, you know, answer that or look at that uh, from the outside view? Sure. So I think, I think no asset class is, market agnostic, but I think the strategy in any asset class can work at the right time. So for example, mm-hmm. right now is a, is a decent time to build. Um, building costs started to come down again. Uh, we're doing a couple of new builds now. We realize that like the debt we have, we're, we're building the very large luxury hotels, uh, you know, five star, whatever. The debt we have on that is only about 11 or 12%, whereas the debt to buy a new hotel is like still like nine or 10%. So there's mm-hmm. like a mismatch, right? In between new supply, being able to build. And you also want to build during recessionary environments, right? You want to build when no one's, when no one's traveling because you don't want to be building during the the hottest season ever, right? Because then you're missing all mm, yeah. that. You're going to open up and downside. So we're kind of moving. We're still staying in our asset class. We know our asset class. We're moving more from what we were doing before, which is a lot of picking up already existing, you know, decently cash flowing. We had some operational play to more of some of this more opportunistic ground up development. Mm, really cool, Kolo. I love it. Um, yeah, it's just congrats to you guys, man, and your success and everything. This is, you know, it's going to be cool to watch your your fund um, as you go out and, and, and raise new capital, launch your second fund. I'm curious right now, um, what has been the capital raising markets? Like, you know, going in 2023, we have a banking crisis right now. You guys are trying to raise a new fund, a $250 million. How have you adjusted yeah. your pitch? How have you changed yeah. things? How you look at the dynamic? Uh, walk me through that. Yeah. So one of the things that we realized uh, as we as we went out to, because you're right, that the, the capital raising environment today is very different than it was even like eight months ago, nine months ago. Um, or even like, frankly, like three months ago. Uh, and so one of the things that we, we think about a lot is like scaffolding, right? So getting into people who already are positions of trust, uh, you know, making sure that, 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 that they're on board with us and then tapping their network. So we found a lot of family offices. We would go to them with the same fund, right? And they would say no. Then we would go, we'd find a friend of theirs who they had invested before and they would say yes. Like, like legitimately the same pitch, the same team, everything. But they said, hey guys, we don't invest in first time. We don't know you guys. Kind of more of like a cold, you know, intro. One of the guys who, you know, that 20 year relationship, he said, Hey, I can vouch for these guys. 
and then, you know, and then they commit, you know, 25, 30 million checks. So we found that you do have to kind of, you know, people are rounding the wagons. So as long as you can try to get inside that, that circle, um, that's, that's mm. the best. Oh, I love it. Oh, cool. That's amazing. Um, well, I, I want to leave us time for a second, then we'll come back. We have a few questions from the Q and A too. I know you brought a gift with you as well today for people that want to, to come. So let me just explain this real quick, how we're doing today. So Kaloa actually is going to be a speaker at Fun Launch Live. So Kaloa is coming actually to speak on stage in front of 2,500 people in Miami, which is going to be so cool, um, talking about all the stuff we just mentioned. Um, and uh, well, actually, Kaloa, real quick, for, well, let me, I guess I'll do this in the right order. So Kaloa's got a gift today for anyone who buys a ticket to Fun Launch Live, you get Kaloa's gift, which is pretty cool. So Kaloa, what's kind of the, what kind of yeah. thing did you bring today for a gift yeah. for the audit for ticket buyers? Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a, a little package of gifts. So there's a couple. Um, and, and look, I'm, I'm a real practical guy. Um, I, you know, I, I think that I think the things that actually we use in our in-house, something that we've developed, I, I wanted to share with others. Um, so we have three things that are in this. One is our seven-step process for buying and analyzing hotels. That walks you through like the nitty gritty of how we look at hotels. And the reason that matters a lot, even for um, you know, multifamily folks, is that there's a ton of opportunities right now to buy hotels and do and do repositioning departments that is like ridiculous multiples. Um, so one of our, our, our process of buying, analyzing hotels. Two is we have a we have a pitch deck template that we find is very very good. E- even in Blackheart, mm-hmm. which has very very sophisticated folks, we sent out one of our example pitch decks. I think I got three dozen messages saying mm-hmm. like this is a great pitch deck, and we get comments on it all the time, right? That's um, awesome. So yeah. One is that, and the third is our actual in-house performa that we use for hotels. Um, so like these are super practical wow. where you can get them. You can start signing up on 10X, on, you know, tracks, all these places to start looking at deals, specific hotel deals, all those kind of things. Um, the pitch deck template doesn't necessarily need to be for hotels and for other you know, types of uh, things. But these are real ones that we use and we've raised you know, hundreds of millions off of it. Jeez, Kalo, if you guys can say thank you in the chat for Kalo, that's amazing. Pro forma, pitch deck, and your whole template of how you approach buying a, a large hotel. Who would like to get access to that? I, I actually do. That'd be amazing. You got to send that over, Chloe, which is awesome. Yeah, so yeah, how sure. this works, you guys, you guys can scan the QR code. We actually have, actually really, I'll go through this real quick. So when you guys get tickets to Fun Launch Live, which is going to be awesome, we actually have a couple other bonuses as well. So you get all Chloe's bonuses. You actually have, we have a, an app, an app that helps you network before the event. So you actually can come and meet people before the event. As the event comes, you can, you know, make connections. Again, the biggest feedback we got was the networking. So we invest in this whole new app and everything to help you meet people leading up to the event. Additionally, you get some cool merch at Fun Launch Live um, as well. So you have the networking app. You have a bunch of cool merch at Fun Launch Live. Um, you also get the partner pricing discount. So if you guys come today with a partner, there's actually a bonus code that you guys see your partner. Like if you buy two or three tickets together in a, in a bundle, you get those for cheaper um, as well there for a total value of priceless. Um, okay, so we'll drop that link again. Mace, you ready? I think actually uh, there's one more thing. So as a bonus... We've actually built out um, an entire full course on how we run events like Fun Launch Live. So we're actually giving this out to all anybody that buys today on the link drop. You guys can get a full course from me. You're also getting Kaloa's gifts um, as well. So again, you get the networking app, exclusive Fun Launch Live merch, partner pricing discounts, course and events, and the gifts from all the speakers today, which is amazing. Kaloa, that's awesome, dude. Your your pitch deck template, how you guys approach your asset class and a full pro form, which is amazing. Today, um, total value of priceless. Today for only four. dollars 97. And this is, by the way, only for 25 spots. So we only have 25 spots today at this price, 497. This is actually discounted as well. So you guys can go on there. I think the discount code is April. Uh, what's the date today? April 6th. April 6th is the discount. Mason's dropping the link. If you guys go right there and, and grab that, I'll put that QR code up one more time uh, with Kaloa's gift specifically to Kaloa, which is amazing. We only have 25 spots as well. We're not giving this to everybody. It's only 25 spots. So if you guys buy right now um, and come on in, you also get the pricing discount, all that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, I'll leave that link up for a second here. Kaloa, we've got, what, two more minutes with you here. We've got a few ch- questions in the chat. Did you see any uh, questions in the chat that you liked? Dude, I don't know how you do it. I can't even keep track of the questions. That are I know we have a lot of chat. people in here. <laughs> um, we have one on pitching. We kind of asked on that one. Let's see. How, oh, on your first raise, this is a good question uh, from Terrence. How did you lock up the property while you raised money for your first raise? What was the kind of the timeline yeah. for that? Yeah, so so there's, a, there's, really a, there's really a two raise or two phase raise um, there, which is, we had to raise the money. You know, I, I was in law school actually when I was dude did our first fifty million of deals. So I had I had no money. Like I had uh, you know, there's there nothing there. So I first had to raise money from someone who would see the GP, right? Who who would do the um, initial uh, earnest money deposit, that kind of stuff. So I first had to raise that money, and I promised them, you know, 30, really the numbers like about thirty percent of, of of what the whole GP would make if they would come in 
at you know the initial and the earnest money is like fully refundable all that kind of stuff. So we got it under contract, raised money from uh, it was actually an attorney that I had worked with, um, and it wasn't a much. You know, our first deal wasn't it wasn't a ton. There was you know maybe maybe it was a fifty k I think to lock up earnest money. So we had it locked up, uh, and I raised money from that guy, and then we went and raised the rest. Uh, so so it was in two phases. And, gotcha, that, really and cool. that shows and that shows how little we had. You know, we didn't even have fifty k yeah. to put put on earnest money. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Kaloa, thank you so much for coming on today. Go follow Kaloa Wolfgram on Instagram or online. Is there a better spot for you? Is, is LinkedIn better? Instagram, is there a spot for you, uh, Kaloa? LinkedIn. LinkedIn's probably best. Um, okay. Yeah, for sure. So go find Kaloa on, on uh, LinkedIn. Go follow him there. Again, thank you so much for your gifts. That's very generous of you. Pro forma, pitch deck, everything. Again, if you guys buy tickets today, you guys get access to all those um, as well. Uh, there. Kaloa, if you guys can in the chat, just give a huge thank you to Kaloa. Um, and, uh, Chloe, thank you so much, man. We'll, we'll, we'll move on here. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Wasn't that awesome? Dude, Chloe, what a stud. Um, I'm so excited to have Chloe come speak at Funnel Stuff. It's pretty cool. All right. You guys ready for our next speaker? Uh, we are right on schedule here. So this next speaker to cue him up, um, me and Mason actually attended, uh, I'm not going to say his name yet, but this guy's event. Um, and I'll leave that link one more time. I know people are asking for that link. There it is. So we attended this next speaker's uh, event, what, three or four years ago, I think, Mace, right? Um, incredible event. One of the best speakers I've seen on stage, commands an audience in the room, and is an incredible speaker about offer creation, how to actually create an offer and do incredible, I, I would call it marketing for, especially for any type of business. And we're having him come speak at Fun Launch Live, especially for funds. A lot of people think in the fund world, it's all about zeros and ones, and they forget fund managers are really good marketers. The biggest fund managers on Wall Street are incredible marketers, how they structure their deal, how they create their offer, their messaging, the whole nine yards. So this next speaker dives into all of that. So if you guys can give me a huge round of applause to Mr. Steve J. Larson. We'll let Steve come on here. Give a huge uh, hello in, in the chat for you, for Steve. Um, Steve, welcome in. Say, say hello here, Steve. When you come, I think he's coming from backstage right now. I'll make sure he comes on live. Um, there's a little bit of lag here. So there he is. Steve, what's going on? How you doing? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, Steve, by the way, me and Mason know Steve really well and just incredible dudes. Steve, I'm so excited to have you on today. And also, you're going to be speaking at Fun Launch Live, which is going to be so fun um, oh. for all you guys. Again, I mentioned this earlier when you were in backstage, but um, Steve's an incredible speaker, articulates content very well. And like, I, I just, I'm so excited to hear your stuff. So first off, if you can give the whole group here, if people have never met you before, maybe a 30 second to one minute thumbnail overview of you, your career, yeah. what you do. Yeah, sounds good. So um, I was broke as a joke about 10 years ago and um, started learning about sales funnels. If you guys know, yeah, it looks like some of you guys know click funnels and stuff. Cool. Very cool. Uh, oh, I see how your comments here. Um, and um, I wanted to be able to go become a professional funnel builder. And I was so broke to go to my first event, which I hope you guys go to this event, by the way. I was broke. And so I started saying, how can I find a way? And I traded funnels for plane tickets and funnels for hotel nights because I didn't have any money. And so I bartered my way there and uh, ended up working as Russell Brunson's personal funnel builder for two years and built more funnels than most people thought of <laughs> and like so many. And then uh, I left and I helped people build and launch their offers online. And I'm known as a capitalist pig and I like to offend socialism everywhere and just piss them off. It's awesome. So that's, that's what I do. <laughs> I love it, Steve. That's awesome. Um, anybody know Russell Brunson in the group? In the chat. Yeah. So Steve has worked directly with him for a long time, really good friends with him. And well, walk us through that story real quick. How do you go from just being broke as a joke, trading to get to an event? And I think it was Russell's event, right? Yeah. How did you go from going to the event? You're a, you're a nobody and turning into be like his personal right-hand man that builds all of those funnels for him. That's a big jump. Walk us through that story. Yeah. You know, it actually came from um, Robert Kiyosaki, a mindset I learned from him, which is that rich people ask, how can I afford it? And poor people say, I can't afford it. Hmm. And What's interesting is, you know, anyone who comes to this event and anyone who's like trying to take up, you know, Bridger and Mason on this, what he's pushing out right there, every single one of you is going to have some piece of barrier pop into your mind that is specific to you, right? And it's this thing that goes, ooh, I would, but what if I can't? Uh? And it's like this thing that like pops up and goes, you shall not pass. And it's actually meant to be for your personal growth. And so I'm very grateful that I could not afford to go, um, to his event, because basically this is it. If I could afford to have gone to his first event, um, I probably would not have been his funnel builder. Mm. Like because of the obstacle, I dedicated myself for the next year to be so good at sales funnels that I was 
like unignorable. You know what I mean? Like I just, and mm-hmm. so that that's basically how it happened is I was really good at building and doing his, his, his thing before he ever met me. And then when he did meet me, he's like, have you been building funnels? I had this huge, like, you know, backlog of stuff that I had done. And he's like, okay, you're the guy. And so part of it was just being good. The second was just going in and just agreeing to the the obstacle that was in front of me. And I doubt that a lot of you guys are like, hey, it's money's the obstacle for me. And it may not be, but it might be like some concept that Bridger Mason talk about. It might be whatever it is. But I think that's the coolest part about entrepreneurship and business in general is the personal development side of it runs in tandem with the skill sets you're learning. And so mm. what you're talking about and teaching there's all these skill sets that are being called out inside of us, whether it's an insecurity or, ooh, I got to go ask someone to contribute to my fund or whatever it is. Um, that is your next challenge, <laughs> right? Yeah. And like leaning into that, that's part of the growth. So anyway, no, that's how I it. love it, Steve. So we've got Steve actually coming in to speak. You might be saying, well, why, why do we have a funnel builder, a marketer coming to speak at Funnel Life? It's because fund managers and pitching, a lot of you guys ask me like, I can't raise capital. I don't know how to find investors. That's marketing. That's marketing and sales. And you need a marketing sales expert to come show you. I know it's a little bit tweaked. It's a little bit different than maybe like running a Facebook ad, but you actually can do that in funds. It's a little bit tweaked, but the concepts of psychology is all the same. So Steve, walk us through, you're going to be on stage at Funlash Live. What are you going to talk and teach about on stage? Like what are you going to go into? I think it's important right now to understand like, you know, uh, you got to be blind to not see that there's a lot of crap going on in the world and um, to be able to see that there's, you know, some scary stuff possibly come down the line, but that's always been true. So there's never been a time, especially right now, to kind of bulletproof what you do as a business. So my next focus, what I'm really doing right now is, um, if you've ever read the book, it's a great book. It's called um, The Automatic Customer. I it's haven't a, read it, no. It's a great yeah. book. It talks a lot about how a subscriber is more valuable than a customer, right? Mm. And and I'm not saying you guys go to get subscribers. The point he's making in the book is that where we are right now is that anyone who's like a VC firm, anyone wants to give any kind of money to something of value, every single one of them only wants things that is obviously dependable profit, right? Dependable profit, not the one-off stuff. And I think that's one of the beauties you guys have with creating and launching your own fund is that you have the ability to create recurring revenue and income for yourself on a level that most new entrepreneurs don't ever figure out for a really long time unless they start that way. Um, and so what I'm going to do is come in and talk and share about how I'm bulletproofing my business and, uh, for, for this time and, and, and what, what's happening. Um, there's always like two things that happens anytime there's like a, a, a um, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for here? Um, contraction, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Anytime yeah. there's like, anytime there's a huge pullback in the marketplace, there's, there's like two big things that happen. Um, actually I'll say it like this. So I was in the army, right? And there was this mission in the army that my unit was called towards where uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with how it works, when the, when the U S president says, Hey, everyone pull out of such and such country, right? You're out that night. <laughs> it's not like, all right, mm-hmm. let me take some time to pack the bags. Oh, it looks like we have time to move out. You're talking about like national relationships. You're out. And so what ends up happening is they leave behind all this equipment. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what a lot of times they'll do is there's a point to the story, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> The, but a lot of times what they'll do is they will have another unit come back in after the fact and blow up all of our old equipment so it doesn't fall into bad guys' hands. So that was one of our assignments. Hmm. And um, there's a really important principle with this. You watch the same thing happen anytime there's any form of recession or anything economically scary that happens is that people emotionally and with their actions pull back and they say, ooh, I'm going to go be safe. But what happens is you get left this massive amount of land. It's a total land grab. No one owns it, right? And so all this equipment, all this audience, all these right, money, funds, things like that, there's so much opportunity, way more than people think there is during a recession, mostly because people pull back. And so mm-hmm. I learned this from, from another guy once. He said that when in the point of recession or in the point of scary economic times, it, while it's the natural urge to pull back, the exact opposite is actually the answer because yeah. everyone else is leaving land. And so it's like really easy to go. There's money out there, guys, that people are looking. There's so much money out there. We're looking for a home. So <laughs> I'll share I'll share a quick story. My, my dad, so they launched their main funds in real estate in 2007, 8, 9, and 10. And he had a friend call him in, I think, 2010 and was like, hey, dude, I'm so sorry. You're in real estate management. I'm, no, I'm here for you. Like, I love you, man. I heard you're in real estate. I know it's been a tough time. Like, sorry. And my dad's like, 
what are you talking about, dude? He's like, no, I've heard real estate's been hard, man. I just, I want you to know I'm here for you. Like, I love you. And my dad's like, dude, we couldn't have picked a better time in the last <laughs> hundred years to get into real estate. He's like, we are so excited. We are buying. He's like, dude. And the guy on the phone was like, oh, huh, I guess, I guess you're right. He's like, man, we're buying stuff for pennies on the dollar. This is the best time ever. And we have a fund behind us. Like, holy crap. To just echo your point. I think it's, it's spot on, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's, that's, that's part of what I'm going to talk about here. And some people bring it up like chat GBT. Right. And especially the times like that also, um, anytime, remember the first time a smartphone came out and you saw it and you're like, this is going to change everything. This is the same thing with AI. This was AI mixed with recession happening, mixed with people being scared, mixed with, frankly, I'm just going to be open here. I think we're meant to try, you know, be scared and people are trying to shove that down our throats. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's like a ton of opportunity right now. And I feel very lucky to be be alive right now. So I'm going to talk about that as well as how to gain traffic and eyeballs towards the funds you create. Cause it's no different. I saw someone comment, how do you do funnels, but in a professional way? The first thing to do is to realize that funnels are not unprofessional. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. So I'm going to teach you how to do those in a way where you can get eyeballs and people asking to join your fund. Um, I'll, I'll say this too. And, and then Steve, I want to hear about your gift that you have to, which is freaking bonkers. I'm excited to hear about it. I'll just say this. The reason we started fun launch, all of this was because Steve Larson yelled at me and Mason was like, dude, you guys need to publish, like start a podcast start. And I was like, no, I don't want to be on camera. I I hate like, and everybody has that thing. And then finally we were like, all right, let's, let's try. And we just turned on the microphone that it slowly got bigger and bigger. And like, the reason we're all here today is literally because Steve was that guy on stage that was like, pushed me out of my comfort zone and pushed us here, which is so cool. Um, we're so excited to have you on stage, Steve. I know you brought with us. I want to give you time to make sure to explain it. This incredible yeah. gift for people that buy tickets today, you guys get access. You'll get Kaloa's gift as well. And Steve's on top of it, which is so cool. And the QR code is there for Steve specifically. Um, so walk us through what that gift is, Steve. Yeah, totally. So, uh, I went through 34 product failures before I got one to work. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, it took me five years to figure out how to get something to take off. That's a lot of lot of repeat, right? And it's a lot of people asking, is this the one that's going to work? You know, crap like that. <laughs> and so I went through 34 failures. Um, but then after that, I went through 60 successes in a row. It's just one after the other. And that's not a brag point. The point is that it's a formula. It's just a formula. And the little gnat brain you've got inside of you that says, but what if scared croc brain, eh, safety, security, learn how to like back smack that, <laughs> like, get out of here. Right. That's, that's the, uh, that's a huge piece of what it takes to just make this work. Um, anything work. Um, uh, so yeah. after I was on probably success number, I don't know where I was on it. I decided to do an event called offer mind and teach people how to create offers. And Russell Brunson asked me to be the offer guy. He said, dude, someone else I don't like is going to go take that space. If you don't go grab it, you're freaky good at offers. Go do it. So I became the self-proclaimed offer guy and um, put an event out called Offer Mind. And the second one was the one that, uh, you know, you and, and Mason went on. I attended, and, uh, yep. Yeah, that's the one. It's 2019. I attended both of them. I actually attended both Offer Minds. Yeah, I was there for both. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, cool. Awesome. I thought yeah, you yeah. said the second one. Cool. Yep. Um, so Offer mine 2019. I'm going to give you guys the same event replays that Mason and Bridger went through that made him explode and actually create fund launch. I watched you guys kind of flounder for the first like six months, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you were like, and then you got it. And you just, man, this is like a situation where the student surpasses the teacher. You guys just like rocket ship exploded. So I'm going to give you guys the exact same speeches that I gave there. So you can see the epiphanies that they were having. So that's my gift to you guys, which, which is amazing. So the full, it's the cool. full event recordings, right, Steve? Yeah, of my speeches. Yep. Oh, which is so awesome. So the event recordings, which are, are I mean, literally, I, I, I've been to a lot of events. I was one of the top events I've ever been to was OfferMind. Um, Thanks, and I've man. been to Tony, I've been to huge events and whatever. And this was the, the, the recordings are incredible. So you guys get that today, which is freaking awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. So um, scan that QR code or Mason drop the link. I think the discount code, by the way, do we still have spots? Those 25? We might have just one or two. Six spots left. There's only six spots left. We already told sold 19 out of the 25. So six spots left. You guys want to grab them. You guys get the gifts for today. You get the discounted tickets, all that kind of stuff. I did a little research, by the way. Um, so this is, by the way, Fun Launch Live. Here's our dates, May 10th to the 12th, location Miami, Florida. Um, and uh, we actually looked up flight prices to Miami. This is from Salt Lake City because you're like, oh, I got to get a flight, hotel. Salt Lake City direct flight was $129. From New York, direct flight, $59. San Diego, direct flight, 
$114. Seattle, probably the farthest you could fly in the continental United States, $119, people. Like Steve, he mentioned he's just traded funnels to get to this event and everything. Um, there's uh, there's not a lot of excuses at this point because flights are so, everything's so cheap, which is awesome. So again, um, go grab that gift there. And then Steve, what's a great place for people to follow you online? I know you have a great podcast, you have a YouTube channel, everything. What's the best spot to send people to like just follow you and follow your journey? Yeah, I'd say the, the best spot just because it, it updates frequently where I'm going and now I'm doing it. But uh, I just go to stevejlarson.com. That shows everything that's right there. So that's it. Okay, stevejlarson.com. And then I, I'll, I'll just plug your, your podcast is amazing. Your content online. If you guys can go even old, like not even the brand new, the old stuff, like go binge his whole podcast. If you want to learn this game of like funnels and marketing, like at least me and Mason are just geeks around it. And uh, especially Mason, Mason's an unreal funnel builder and just marketer. Go follow Steve. Steve's an incredible person. And, and Steve, I'm just so, I'm so excited to have you on stage. It's gonna be amazing. Um, thank you so much for coming on brother. It's freaking awesome, man. Full circle moment. Guys, excited to see you there. It'll be awesome to get your ticket. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Bye guys. Oh, click, uh, click the link in the chat. Mason's dropping the links in there. If you guys don't see that QR code, it doesn't work or something. Go grab that link on there. If you bought tickets earlier, you get these bonuses as well for those actions. Cool. So people are asking if you, if I bought tickets earlier, do I get the bonuses? Yes. So if you, if you bought tickets, even like a month ago, we're going to add, actually add all these bonuses back in for you guys as well, which is so cool. So even if you bought a month ago or you're buying today, all these bonuses are in and we're actually going to stack all the speakers bonuses on today for all of you guys, which is pretty cool. Okay. So all of you guys get these bonuses. And the reason for that, like, I think there's so much value. Number one, and just these, all these speakers coming on are very successful, high valuable people. And then also it's, it's cool to like prep yourself for fun launch live. So you like prep and you learn, and then you come to the event and then the event is like explodes. If you just, if you don't prep it on, just show up, you're like, ah, it's, it's okay. But if you prep before and go through like Steve Larson's recordings of his event, you're going to hear him on stage and be like, whoa, it, like it just, I don't know, it helps a light bulb moment go off. Sound good? So that's the link. Check in the chat. We have our next speaker coming on. He's already in the back room. You guys ready? We're just flying through these. This has been fun, by the way. Type a yes in the chat. You guys cool? We keep, keep rolling. This next speaker, we actually just landed him yesterday as a speaker. One of our final spots as a speaker, which is so cool. This speaker is trained hundreds of thousands of sales professionals around the world. Um, and whether it's low ticket, small sales or high end sales, like selling an investor or a big institution or family office to come and invest in your fund. So please give me a huge round of applause for Mr. Jeremy Miner. Everybody in the chat. Welcome in Jeremy. Good to have you here. How you doing brother? Hey Bridger. Thanks for having me on. I helped 141,000. I think we're almost to 500,000 now. Did you copy and paste that from something from three years ago? What's going on? <laughs> we found that on your uh, on your LinkedIn. So you got to update your LinkedIn for hey, me there. guys, update the freaking LinkedIn. Good Lord. <laughs> Who's in charge of that? Over here? All right. Uh, Jeremy on? is one of the top sales trainers around the world. And I we are in just like so excited to have you come, Jeremy, to speak. It's going to be amazing. If you can, people that haven't met you before or don't know you, give us a maybe a 30-second to one-minute thumbnail of you, your companies, what you guys do. Oh, what would you like to know? So yeah, I got started in sales 22 years ago. I'll avoid all that. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that maybe in the keynote. Uh, but we, I retired. I had a 17-year sales career, did somewhat decent, some people would say, and retired in 20, what, 2017. And was setting around, you know, I was I invested in real estate, done somewhat decent in that, and was kind of bored. And I started seeing all these like IG ads and Facebook ads from the sales gurus talking about how you should sell. And I looked at that and I'm like, man, if I would have sold that way, I would have made like 95% less. In fact, I'd still be working. There's no way I could have retired. So it kind of it got me thinking, like, man, there's so many people out there that like want to make more money, they want to help more people, but they just you just don't know what you, if you don't know what you don't know, you don't know what to fix. And so I locked myself in my man cave for about six months, wrote out the first version of what we have now is what's called NEPQ 2.0. And we launched in 2018 with me and my former assistant from my previous job. I said, hey, I'm going to start a sales training company. You want to come work? So it was me and Beth, my assistant. And uh, yeah, the rest is, is history. Now we have a 140 some employees and we're just kind of growing all over the world and just having lots of fun. We train 158 different industries. So we're, you know, we're just trying to stay out of trouble over here. That's what <laughs> Yeah. You guys are, are unreal. And something I, I loved about, you know, we, we talked in person, I think it was a few months ago about, because there's a lot of guys out there that teach sales and marketing and other stuff, but uh, you really dug in with your background as well into the psychology of selling. And actually the the really deep layers of the psychology around a sale and a, a buyer and a seller. Can you walk us through some of yeah. those things that you dug into? 
Yeah, so my background, I went to, obviously I went to school there in Utah, Utah Valley University. So I studied behavioral science and human psychology, which if you, I won't give you the scientific terms, but if you study behavioral science, it's really the study of the brain, okay? It's, it's the study of why a human being makes decisions. It's behavioral patterns, right? It's like, why, when they see a sign, why do they go left instead of going right? You know, why, mm -hmm. why do they say yes? Why do they say no? It's like decision-making, which is really sales 101. And so it might be, I'll, I'll do this for everybody. So there's three, According to behavioral science, there's three forms of communication. And, you know, if you can write these down, because once you understand the differences in persuasion and where you are now, even if you're already doing good compared to where you could be, completely changes everything for you. So the first mode of selling, like if I asked you this question, Bridger, if I said, if I said, if I asked you this question, okay, what's the first image that comes to your mind? When you hear the words boy, the room selling, what's the first image that comes in your mind? Boy, the room selling. I think of like a stage or people running to the back of the room or something like that. Is that what you think? Most people, when I ask that question at an event, they'll be like, oh, Wolf on Wall Street or Gordon Gecko, right? It's like oh, the okay. center, high pressure, <laughs> you know, pound the phones, you know, call mm. a bunch of leads, get 2000 no's to get that one yes, you know, manipulate pressure. I've got the best this, I've got the best this. We're the number one company. But according to the data, okay, we are the least persuasive when we tell people things or we mm. attempt to dominate them, or we attempt to push them or posture them or manipulate them into doing something we want them to do. Just like if you told your spouse, like, hey, you really, really need to do something. And then you kept pressuring them and pushing them. What do they typically do back? They, <laughs> they push back, right? Yeah, yeah. Behavior 101. So I'll give you a few examples of the least persuasive way to sell, presenting. And I know when I say that, but what? I have to have a great pitch. But according to the data, it's very low on the persuasion poll. Okay, so we we pull up our slide deck and we show them the corporate offices and we show them pictures of the founders and here's the pictures of all of our customer service awards and all of our clients. We have the best this, we have the best that. We're the number one market leader in this. Which, by the way, doesn't every single salesperson or company say they have the best product or service? Hmm. How many salespeople say you come up to you and like you know we're the fifth best in the market, Bridger? <laughs> nobody does, right? Yeah, nobody says so that. No. The way the human brain works, when we hear things that we constantly hear from every salesperson who's ever tried to sell us something, it actually causes them to trust us less, especially if we talk down about our competitors, all right? So according to the data, it's not very persuasive if your presentation is more than 10% of your entire sales process. The problem is in pretty much every industry we're in, 158 different industries, including yours, the presentation is usually about half of the entire sales process. We have to get that down to 10, and that's a whole nother training. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one I'll give to you, um, telling your story. I hate to tell you this. When you're selling one-on-one, -on -one, nobody cares about their, your story. Whose story do they care about? Their story. Their own, yeah. Given a sales pitch. We've all been taught you got to give a great pitch according to the data. Not very persuasive. Nobody likes to be pitched. How many times do you like to be pitched? No bueno, right? Putting sales pressure on them. And the big one, assuming the sale, according to the data, very low on the persuasion poll, hence that term sales is a numbers game. That's really where it comes from, right? It's a numbers game because of the way we're communicating is triggering sales resistance, causing the prospect to emotionally shut down, right? Second form of communication is more known as consultative. I'm not gonna give you the scientific term. It's more known as like consultative selling, all right? This came out in the late mm -hmm. 70s. 80s with uh, methodologies like Sandler methodology, uh, mm. which was revolutionary at the time that you should ask questions to find the needs of the prospect compared to the boiler room selling or like spin selling with Neil Rackham, college professor, never sold anything, by the way, but they taught mm. you needed to ask questions to find the needs of the client, which makes sense. But the problem with that, the downfall of that is when you only ask logical based questions, we call those surface level questions. What type of answers are your prospects going to give you back? surface level answers and do human beings make buying decisions off logic or emotion it's emotion brain studies prove that in fact when i say that sometimes to like very sophisticated people they're like no i only make decisions <laughs> off logic and i'm like that's so interesting because there's a part of our brain the emotional side of the brain and when i'll give you an example of this it's kind of crazy let's say that you're you know doing a tour in the middle east and you have a brain injury what they found with those uh, military vets, when they have brain injuries like that, you know, grenade goes off and the emotional part of their brain gets damaged. They can't make a decision 
they're vegetables at that point. They can't mm. decide to go to the bathroom. They pee their pants. They can't decide to tie their shoes. So decision-making is based on your emotional side of the brain. It's just science 101, all right? So according to the data, very low on the persuasive poll. Now, more persuasive mm. than boy the room selling, but you still have to play the numbers game because you're not drawing out very much emotion by simply asking surface-based, logical-based questions. Now, the third mode of selling, I'll wrap this up, According to the data, the most persuasive is when we ask what are, well, I'll, I'll give you this example, okay? Um, I would say the third, third most persuasive, okay, according to the data, is when we use what's called dialogue. Now, everybody's heard dialogue, but when we ask what are called neuroemotional persuasion questions, now that stands for any PQ if you've never heard of that, all right? And usually, typically, people ask me like, okay, Jeremy, that makes sense, but how do I get a human being to persuade themselves? You know, you can't just show up and say, hey, you know, give me your money and you're going to make this return with, with what you guys do. You have to ask easy to answer questions in a step-by-step -step structure, in a natural way, okay, that causes the prospect to want to open up, want to engage, and actually pull you in rather than you trying to push them forward and sell themselves. See the difference in those three? Mm, yeah. That's kind of the difference there in a nutshell. Wow. I love it. I, I, uh, I am very excited to have you speak. Uh, you can tell Jeremy's got a, just a wealth of knowledge and you're trying to cram all this stuff into five minutes. We got a, a good chunk for you, the day three, actually. The, and you guys are going to come and hear from Jeremy Minor live in, at Fun Lives. It's going to be amazing. So Jeremy, I know you had a gift for the people live today that come on, um, something that they can get from you as well, people that join today. So what, what is that? I don't know if I should do that for you guys. No, here's what we're going to do. So just have them join. We'll just have them join one of our free Facebook groups. Just we'll give them some hors d'oeuvres, some little nibbles in there. Uh, so have them go to salesrevolution.pro, salesrevolution.pro. We have about 60,000 people in there, salespeople, executives, uh, investors too. We've seen a bunch of testimonies from investors and their business owners kind of all over the place. Have them go to salesrevolution.pro and right when they join, have them message me or I'll have somebody on my team message them. They'll probably message you underneath my account. All right. Uh, they'll message you a free gift. I said I would do it for you. It's called the NEPQ 101 mini course. All right. It's just a list of different questions they are more generic. Okay, they're not industry specific. We'll get into that more in the keynote uh, that they can use to, you know, in different sales situations they're in. So just have them go to the salesrevolution.pro and we go live in there two or three times a week, different Q and A's, different trainings, stuff like that. We'll give them some more d'oeuvres little nibbles in there, but just uh, somebody will message them when they join and we'll give them that to them. No problem. Really cool. Okay. So you got a full mini course there, which is awesome. Go find that Facebook group. Again, um, we'll drop those links down. I think Mason will drop them in the chat for you guys as well. Um, and we'll just add this. And by the way, I want to make sure you guys, oh, there, there it is. You guys go follow Jeremy Miner on social media. Uh, I've actually sent, I can't tell you how many videos I've sent to my own sales team. I'm like, dude, look at this video from Jeremy. Like you got to go watch this. And I know Jeremy's like, dude, that's like, you know, 5% of the content is that, you know, online, we got all this other stuff in the back end, which is so cool for, for with Jeremy's company and stuff, but even just his free social media clips, I'm like sales guys, like you guys got to watch this. Cause it's so insightful, which is awesome. Yeah. They can follow me on uh, Instagram. Just go to my handle, Jeremy Lee minor. I think we have 300 and how many followers do we have 356,000 followers. It's the verified account. Make sure they don't follow one of the spam accounts. Sounds yeah, like yeah. crypto or something, but they can follow me there too. We do about 160 reels a month on IG. Awesome. Yeah. You guys pump out the content. You guys are amazing. So again, uh, here's all the bonuses you guys get today. The partner pricing discount, inclusive merch at FunLocks Live, the networking app, all that kind of stuff. And our full course we're going to drop on events. You guys get all the cool stuff um, and the gifts from Jeremy and the previous speakers as well, which is so cool. And you get to come to FunLocks Live and hear Jeremy live on stage. You're going to walk through all this. I've seen you, some of your clips on stage, you work with the audience You're doing like, you do a really dynamic speech. I'm just, I'm very gotta, excited to have gotta, you come they, speak. You know, we try to keep them on their toes. So they just got to be ready. They gotta be, I, might, yeah. I might pull them in. I might just have them come in. You know, <laughs> That's awesome. So go follow Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on today. You're a stud. Go find Jeremy on social media and go get all this free stuff. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Bridger. See ya. Um, Wasn't that awesome, you guys? Jeremy's just such a stud. I'm so excited to have him come live and our other speakers as well. Um. So I'll add, I, I want to ask Mason real quick. Are, I think, are we sold out in the 25? Uh, so I'm going to go read them right now. Uh, okay. So, so we're sold out. Now, check out. Yeah, check out right now. We are sold out in the 25 spots um, uh, right now. So we'll just, we'll leave it open for 30 more seconds. But uh, we are sold out in the 25 spots. Um, for those, again, the 25 spots, grab all this cool stuff at 497. 
um, which is pretty awesome. So go grab those spots. If you guys are checking out, I check out like really quickly right now. Mason's just about to change all the codes and all that kind of stuff. And then we got our next um, speaker coming on live in about one minute. So I'll give you guys one minute. We'll do like a little, just like, I'll give you a second. So you're not going to miss anything. Go grab, you can grab that QR code from Jeremy right there. It also gets the gifts that Chloe Wolfgram added where you can add, you get his pitch deck, his whole pro form of how they go and do, you know, tens of million dollar properties with hotels. You get Steve Larson's recordings from his trainings. And then Jeremy Miner, his uh, mini course that he has on sales and persuasion, all that kind of stuff, all included there. And we got more speakers to come and more gifts to come, which is pretty cool. So um, y'all are amazing. I'll give you like 30 more seconds here. Go go to that page. You're not going to miss anything. And uh, and then we'll invite our next speaker on in just a second. So we'll leave that link there. And I'm, I'm actually very excited for our next speaker. It's going to be really fun. Um, well, I'll tease, I'll tease this person up for just a second here. So grab those links. Um, this next speaker that I'm about to bring on um, is pretty remarkable. You guys, uh, you might know him. Um, one of the most famous funds, I would say, around the world right now, um, which is pretty cool. You've probably seen their social media ads. You've seen all sorts of cool stuff that they've put out and and put and I'll, I'll give you guys literally 30 more seconds to fill out all those links and everything. But this next speaker is incredible. I am so, just enthralled that we even got him to come speak uh, at our event in Miami. Um, we'll go from there. How are we doing, Mace? Feeling good? Okay, we're closing that. We're closing that link up right now with all the bonuses right now. So go grab them before they close up, um, and uh, we'll go from there. We got our next speaker ready. I think he's in the backstage. Okay, let's get going. So this next speaker, you may uh, know him from huge social media stuff uh, with Grant Cardone. Anybody know Grant Cardone? Okay, so uh, Uncle G on social media. Grant Cardone, Cardone Capital. They've raised over a billion dollars from retail investors. Um, onboarding one to $3 million a day uh, from uh, on average across all their accounts and all their funnels and everything. So if you guys can give me a huge round of applause, the person that is actually on the back end that runs all those funds for Grant Cardone, because he's kind of the face, the person that runs all those things and actually does like the day-to-day is Mr. Ryan Seco. So Ryan, come on, uh, come on live right here. Welcome. If you guys can give a huge like hello and round of applause to Ryan Seco. Ryan is the executive vice president of Cardone Capital with over a billion dollars in retail uh, investor capital raised. Um, Ryan also uh, formerly was Grant Cardone's pilot and then came to start buying real estate, became his fund manager, now, now manages billions of dollars uh, through Cardone Capital, which is so cool. So Ryan, welcome in. Uh, let's see you there, Ryan. Can I see you? Yeah, good to see you. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Good to have you on, Ryan. This is awesome. Um, so if you can, I, I gave you a little intro there. You probably heard it. If you can, um, give us a you know thirty second to a minute overview of of now what you do with Cardone Capital, a little bit of your story as well. I'd love to hear. If people don't know who you are, would love for uh, for you to intro, intro yourself. Well, number one, you're a stud. Always good seeing you. It looks like you're working out over there. You you getting bigger? Or your shirt's getting smaller. <laughs> I just keep. I'm just following Mason Vrain's workout program over here, and it, it helps. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I love it. And thanks for having me on here today. I, um, as you mentioned, I was a pilot. I used to work for United and and I, I've always been in real estate, but I, I, I became a pilot because I didn't have any money. And so I, the reason I became a pilot is because I wanted to hang out with high net worth individuals. And so as I work my way through the airline, my end goal was always to be around guys who are moving and shaking in the real estate space. Uh, my current position at Cardone Capital is with Grant Cardone. I lead the fund and in, in, in whether it's acquisitions or raising capital uh, and building the team. But no, look, I mean, what we built here and what we've done uh, just to condense it, you know, we, we've we raised $1.1 billion from the crowd via uh, accredited and also non-accredited investors. And we've literally built a machine. You know, we've cut out all the middlemen. And I know this is what we're talking about today is, you know, how do you start a fund? How do you actually do bigger projects, not just, you know, on a budget trying to do deals yourself. Uh, that's what we created. You know, we've created something really, really beneficial for not just us, but also for the investors. And uh, I'm proud to say that I sit right now in Aventura. We got 12,000 units. We have office and also multifamily or real estate company. And uh, I feel like we're still in the infancy stages of what we're doing. And uh, uh, it's incredible. Oh, I love it. Ryan, we're, we're just so thrilled to have you. You're going to be on stage and we're going to just we're gonna. Uh, it's gonna be awesome to share. I, I'm so excited to have you come speak. Um, we, I specifically, I, I'm gonna ask you on stage as well. But I, I'm curious. You guys are, I, I would assume, the biggest group on planet Earth that have raised through crowdfunding sources specifically. I know you guys have Reg D funds. You have crowdfunding. You, you kind of do both together. But you've really tapped a, an amazing cord with retail investors. And I know Grant and you have that mission to, to help regular people get into real estate. Walk us through kind of that mission. What you guys, your approach to going after 
you know, I know you could probably go after big checks and get huge family offices like a lot do, but you guys still leave a lot of slots open for the little guy to let little, the little, you know, guy with like people like me, maybe or Mason (laughs) to get into these big multifamily deals. Walk us through that. So look, number one, yes, we are the biggest. Uh, Number two, we are the best. Uh, Number three, we like to pride ourselves in saying that we want to level the playing field for the everyday investor. The reason why we're doing it is because we all start out as a little guy. You know, when I was flying as a pilot, I literally made 125 grand, 150. I was technically non-accredited. And I think that's a huge, um, I think that's a huge impact on, on, on people who aren't accredited because they never get access to the great deals. And so what we did as a mission, Grant, Elena, myself, we said, let's do this. Even though it costs more money to let the non-accredited investor in, it takes more time. You have to do more filings with the SEC. Uh, and that's actually my gift that I brought. I wanted to make this simple for people to understand actually how to do these different funds, right? Because it's not overly complicated. You just have to do it the right way. But look, our mission is simple. We want to open this up. We want to cut out all the middlemen. And we want to give people the biggest, the best uh, uh, deals. Because to your point, most of the deals that we do are literally just set for the highest net worth individuals. It's set for the only, the, like, only the big institutions. And so we wanted to level the playing field. And so that's what we've done. Oh, that's amazing. Just so, so people, yeah, people that aren't aware, like for example, um, Ray Dalio's funds, their minimum commitment for their fund is a hundred million dollars. That's, that's the crazy. minimum amount they'll they'll take. You you have to have a four billion dollar net worth to even talk to them about investing in their funds. So most of these funds on Wall Street just you have to have a certain level of high net worth to even access the funds and let alone get in. And what you guys have done is said, you know what, we're gonna turn that on its head. Now I'm an investor in two real estate funds. I had to put a quarter million in each one of them. That was the minimum, right? And you guys have said, hey, we're going to let the non-accredited investor person get into this space, which I think is just remarkable. Um, and the minimum is five grand. By the way, the yeah. minimum is five grand for the non-accredited. It's a hundred grand for the accredited, but, but, but we've reduced the minimum. So that way, when you and me are first starting out and or people who are in their careers, they don't have access to these big deals. They can now exercise that muscle. I always tell people in investing, they're like, should I do five grand? Should I do 20 grand? Should I? The answer is yes, because if you don't have that muscle that's exercised to actually invest, when you start making real money, whether it's the funnels or the education or the real estate, you're never going to go back for more because that, that muscle is not, it's not tone. Mm, I love that. Um, okay, switching gears. The question I want to ask you, Ryan, um, I've asked most of the speakers on here. How are you yourself personally and Cardone Capital preparing for kind of current economic turmoil and recession. What are you guys doing on, again, personal and your fund side to prepare for, for economic downturn right now? Yeah, so it's such a great question too, because if you look at our our, our trajectory and our, our, our growth, right? We were buying a lot of deals and then we stopped. Uh, when interest rates in, in, in the market had shifted, which we all know it shifted, uh, we stopped uh, purchasing. We actually bought a deal from uh, Goldman. We're amongst friends, so I can tell you who I bought it from. Uh, but we bought a deal from Goldman, all cash in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, late last year. But we're very disciplined, you know. So what we're doing to prepare is we've actually created a fund um, for 150 million dollars, and we're raising money. You know, we don't do commits; we raise the money, and we are positioning ourselves to whether you know it's 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 going in and buying a portfolio or buying a one-off deal. We think that there's massive opportunity in this current marketplace and also 12, 18, 24 months. This is the time where you want to buy. This is the time where you want to be active. But you can't just become active now. I always encourage people, you got to be active throughout all the cycles. Yep. Because if you're not active throughout all the cycles, then you're not going to know the players to go to to actually position yourself to make the best deals. But look, now is the time to do deals especially when you're looking at a long-term horizon. So look, we've always been prepared for this. We went through COVID. The way we do it is we over-communicate. We do investor calls every single month. Uh, we send out emails. We like, like we do all of the right things that people write about in books. We actually do at Cardone Capital because number one, Grant Cardone is an absolute animal and a beast. Number two, we have a great team. We got an executive team and we just know like what we set out to do is to buy the best assets and hold them for a very long period of time. Uh, and that's what we do. That's what we've been doing. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Mm, I love it, Ryan. Um, spot on. And, and it's just funny. I, I've, I did a little research project. We were looking at funds and even the vintage of those funds over the last number of decades. It was really interesting funds that launched in 2001 and 2007 and 2008, like the, the vintage year 
they almost double outperform their peers. There's a whole study they did with 520 funds. They doubled the returns of their peers, average return over the next 10 years. And it's interesting, you know, you look at people, you can look at things, you know, with the glass fat, glass, glass half full or glass half empty right now, hardship and, you know, there's economic downturn at the same time. I believe funds that vintage right now and are in the game to your point that have been in the seasons have prepped are ready to go have capital ready to deploy are going to scoop up some incredible deals and do very, very well going forward. It's actually, I think this fund launch live is going to be the most important fund launch that we've held and any event we've held so far is just because of the, the economic times we're in. If you can nail right now and make the right moves right now, that's where the next group of billionaires is going to get made. The next group of billionaires and every asset class is going to be made from stuff right now. And, and to exactly your point, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, Ryan. Know, really quick, I, oh yeah. Really, I, I agree with you. I think that this next event will be the biggest and the best and the people who are really serious about creating these funds and doing something bigger, because to your point, like, like when there's confusion, when there's un, like people aren't certain, that's when you really want to go in there and take like, it's not taking advantage. That's when you want to buy all the assets. Like, like, like you, you have to do it in these, the, the, these times of uncertainty because the bigger players, the bigger institutions, they, are, they have to be on the sidelines because their money is locked up. They don't, they don't have this entrepreneur. And that's what I love about you is you're an entrepreneur, me education, me actual fund practitioner. And, and, and that's the beauty about what you're doing. And that's why I love being here and, 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 and participating in this with you. Cause I think there's a lot of value that you're adding to the audience. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Well, I'm so excited to have you, Ryan. So just so everyone's aware, Ryan's coming to speak at Fun Launch Live, which is going to be a remarkable um, for everyone that's going to be attending. We're going to have you in person. And by the way, like, do you think you're going to get smarter or dumber being in a room with people like Ryan or Kaloa or Jeremy? Probably a lot. Like, it's it's all about the rooms that you're in, the people you're around, people you shake hands with. And like when I hop on with Ryan, dude, I feel like I get smarter every time I talk to you, Ryan, which is awesome. Now, I know you have it. We're short on time here. I know you have a gift that you brought to the audience stage for people that buy tickets that are coming to kind of prep for the event. What is that? So look, I, 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 I add value in very practical ways, right? I, I am a very practical person. Uh, what I've done, and I've worked with a lot of attorneys and, and people who uh, make this simple, I created a PDF where if you want to do uh, regulation A, which you and I are going to be talking about, uh, if you want, which is non-accredited, uh, reg D, which is 506B, which is, you know, closer type or people like groups, uh, reg D 506 C. So what I did is I created a PDF where it has a, a very simple drop down where you can see maybe what vehicle or what fund is best for you to start with, you know, maybe being easier, maybe not, you know, costing as much money, but I've always found this very um, beneficial for me when I was starting a fund and or navigating the waters. And so I wanted to share that with you and your audience and your group. So that way they can get prepped for what you and I are going to be talking about at the event. I just think it's a huge value add. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. Uh, who would like to have access to that? Type a yes in the chat. Wouldn't that be sweet? Um, keep simple. Keep things simple. God, the most important thing is keep things simple because you, everybody on here could actually go and create a fund. They just mm -hmm. like, there's all these questions that I always had. And so I'm creating these products. I'm creating these PDFs of the things that I wish I had when I was creating these funds uh, uh, six and seven years ago of $1.1 .1 billion later. Mm, oh, I love it. Um, which is going to be amazing. Now, I know we we were we were sold out on the ticket so far right now. Mason's like signaling me behind here. What, what are you thinking, Mace? There's a lot of people in the chat asking if they can get access to it. What do you think? Sell one more. Sell one more. Okay. <laughs> what to? Okay, so there's a new batch. How many spots? Fifteen spots. Okay, so we've we closed that last group. We raised price just a little bit. But you guys are still discounted from all that kind of stuff. So um, it's still that you still get like the, the discount on normal tickets from the website. So we're going to open it up for 15 more spots for you guys right now. So go grab that link where Ryan, you get the Ryan's gift. You get all the previous gifts. Four already gone. Okay. Four people already took them. Okay. So they're quick right now. So grab that link. Uh, Mason will drop in the chat here. This year's lineup um, is pretty awesome. We've got Ryan obviously coming. Um, we've got Ed Milet, Jim Rogers. It's uh, It's been pretty cool. If you guys don't know Jim Rogers, um, co-founder of the Soros Funds with George Soros, Ed Milet, you see some of these people, Steve Larson, Kaloa, Daniel White, uh, Daniel and Garrett White, um, Pace Morby's coming on a minute, Ryan Miller, Vina, Neil Bawa, David, yeah, I'm gonna go quick through these, but we got Ryan uh, as well coming with this. It's been it's been pretty awesome the people we have. So final call, go grab um, that. You get Ryan's gift as well um, on there as well. And then Ryan, um, last thing, if people want to follow you or you know get access and just follow your journey and everything, what's the best spot for people to go to just follow you and follow your journey? 
I, look, social media, I mean, whether it's Instagram, I, th- that's what I'm most heavy on just because I, I can connect with people on DMs. Uh, it's at Ryan Seco. So Instagram, but look, I would love to follow some of the people on here too. So if they send me a DM, if they have any questions, uh, I'm a complete open book. And look, I'm really excited to come with you on this event because I am a very simple individual. I'm not the smartest, but once I get something, I will get it. I will help you guys. Uh, I want you guys to succeed. There's enough out there for all of us. So I live in the land of abundance. Anybody can reach out to me directly on Instagram or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always I'm always accessible. Oh, I love it. Ryan, thank you so much. Go find Ryan Seco on Instagram. Ryan, you're amazing. Thanks so much for coming on today. We'll see you live at Fun Launch Live. Um, we'll, we'll be in person. It'll be really fun. Thank you, Ryan. People's champ is back. See you soon, buddy. <laughs> see ya. Thank you. All right. Wasn't that awesome? Um, we've opened up a few more spots. I think they're going really quick right now. So you guys can go grab those spots, go grab the bonuses from Ryan. And then all the previous bonuses from today, those are recordings from events, uh, PDFs, pro formas, uh, pitch deck designs, all that kind of stuff you guys can have there, which is pretty cool. Um, and we'll give, we got one more minute. We got our next speaker coming on live here. Um, all right. You guys ready? Isn't this been fun? Whew, stretch out for a sec. Um, you know, don't like, I, I always say, I'm just like, man, I personally, I literally, I was, me and Mason were talking like two, a week ago. I was like, I just personally, Bridger Pennington, I am so excited to just be in the same room as these speakers and be able to talk to them and shake their hand and everything. And, and, uh, for this event, we were, we were like laughing. We're like, dude, this year's lineup has just been unreal. The type of caliber of people that are coming. And mostly if you can't tell most people that are coming on today have a very giving attitude and mindset, an abundant mindset. And a lot of these speakers actually come and speak. And then they're like, Hey, I'm just going to go. I'm, I'll be in the back of the room. Just come shake my hand. Come talk to me. I'll answer any questions you have. I multiple speakers have already told me they're going to do that at the event. So you're going to be able to come be there. And then all these speakers that speak, they're going to come to the back of the room or whatever. And you're going to be able to hang out and answer questions and just meet these types of people, which is, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, you guys ready for the next speaker? Yeah. We feeling good. Okay. Let's, uh, let me just make sure they're in the backstage here. Our next speaker is phenomenal, has over, I'm um, doing a lot of in the real estate space. He actually came, we did a podcast a little bit ago. One of my favorite podcasts I think we've ever done as far as practical advice for people, anybody like brand new starting out, like this is like, you know, I, it's like, where do I find these high net worth individuals? How do I like connect with them? How do I get them on a list? How do I do all this stuff? This speaker is going to dive into all of that. For people that are just like brand new, I'm just starting out. I don't know how to get going. Um, so if you guys can give me a huge welcome in the chat to Mr. Neil. Bawa. All right, Neil, come on live here. Um, excited to have you on. Founder of two companies with real estate investment companies over a billion dollars AUM. Neil um, is an absolute, uh, just a maniac with real estate and networking and all this kind of stuff. Um, Neil, welcome on, brother. How are you doing? Good. Hello from one maniac to another. <laughs> Good to have you on here today. Um, Neil, if people that have never met you before don't know you, you guys should know Neil. You should follow him online. But um, Neil, what, give me a you know 30 second to one minute overview of you, your companies, your business, what you do. I'm a technologist in data science that uses a, a vast number of technology and outsourcing hacks to uh, optimize my real estate businesses. Uh, portfolio is a, a little over a billion dollars. Currently, uh, $280 million invested with a thousand investors. Wow, that's a <laughs> as unreal. I love it, Neil. So question for you. I know a lot of people you know, online or whatever, they see people and they're like, man, they, they must be super extroverted. They must be this social butterfly. That's how they meet these investors. How they do this. And in our conversation on our podcast was like, you were like, yeah, that, that kind of helps, but also there's a lot of other ways to do this. You can take a systematic approach to meeting investors. You kind of want to walk people through your approach to finding, you now have over a thousand investors and what you've done to, to accumulate that. Absolutely. The first thing is targeting. I think that we spend such an incredible amount of time trying to get to people, trying to get eyeballs. I'm more interested in which eyeball should I have? I want to get one tenth or one hundredth of the eyeballs that I can get because I'm only focused on what is the net worth of those eyeballs. So mm. I use a 136 software stack and nine of them are just focused on making sure that I'm only talking to people with a certain level of net worth. So the, the, the honest answer is we waste a tremendous amount of our time working with people that simply cannot help us reach our goals. Not, nothing bad. I think it's, it's good. You, you connect with nice people. But my company's focus is continuously looking at where are the right people first. So we spend an enormous amount of time making sure that our top of funnel is basically accredited investors. And, and then we have a separate funnel for people that are $5 million net worth. 
one for $20 million net worth and one for $100 million net worth. To $100 million net worth, we sell them entire projects. They buy 20, 30, $40 million buildings. That is something that very few people do and we obsess about it. We spend thousands of hours every year doing it. And I think that's the difference between a technologist and a fund manager. Mm -hmm. I love it. And you guys have really perfected this. And I think it segues right in. What are you actually going to teach people at Funlarch Live? I'm so excited for this topic, but walk us through, kind of give us a, a nibble of what people are going to, if they come to Funlarch Live, what they're going to learn from you there. You know, what's the biggest problem today with email marketing? Email still is, you know, one of the most powerful ways of promoting things. Here's the problem. You are going to get banned. You're going to go to a conference, you're going to gather information, you're going to put it into our database, and then you are going to get banned. And that's a huge problem with a cold database. I'm going to teach you while I'm on stage. So while I'm on stage, I will mine thousands of accredited investors from LinkedIn. I will move those investors into a secondary software and you'll watch me do this. I will then be, take the LinkedIn information, which doesn't have email addresses, populated with a thousand, then I will move the database again into a third party software, which has absolutely zero bounce rate and zero unsubscribe. And I will then finish by showing you how I've sent millions of emails and had tens of thousands of webinar registrations by actually showing you my dashboard in that third software. All of this will be on stage. You should be able to replicate it in the following 30 minutes after I get on off stage. Who wants to learn that? <laughs> I do. I'm actually very excited to have you come. This is uh, to have you go on LinkedIn, pull names, pull data, scrape it, then send emails. I mean, you have really mastered this world of using essentially data and softwares to pull, excuse me, using softwares to pull data and accumulate it to accumulate investors from all around the world, people that you maybe you've never even met in person to have them come and invest in deals and projects. It's phenomenal. Who I, I would love to learn that in the chat, which is awesome. Um, so Neil is a, just a, 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 back to what I said, like a, a freak about all this. You're so analytical, so data driven. I love it. Um, right now, the question I've been asking all the speakers as well, uh, how are you changing or tweaking things for a recession right now? What's, what's, how are your companies moving and whether it's your companies or in your personal life, how are you preparing and tweaking things for current economic downturns? So I have a strategy, I, it's an internal strategy, it's called Podmore, P-O-D-M-O-R, and I'll, I'll point out what Podmore stands for, right? So pivot, optimize, diversify, market, outsource, retain. So once again, pivot, optimize, diversify, market, outsource, retain. These are my six strategies. My first strategy is pivot, right? Oh, my, my existing business model is not working well because interest rates are so high. So I ask myself, who's benefiting from that? Well, the answer is lenders. They have bigger margins. So instead of being a fund manager, can I open a new division to become a private lender? The answer is sure can. Same database, same people, but now I'm a private lender. I'm using that money to become private mm -hmm. lender. Why? Because right now lenders have the upper hand, pivot right? Mm -hmm. Same vein. I ask myself, if multifamily buildings are going down in price and they're bleeding truckloads of cash because of interest rates, how can I benefit from it instead of suffering from it? Obvious answer, a rescue fund or a distress fund. Now my investors and I can bail out properties. I can be first in line to get paid once rates improved. I transfer the risk to the existing investors in these properties. I put myself and my new investors in pole position for current cash flow, future profits, right? Pivot, right? Number two, optimize. This is the best time to cut costs. I can tell you this number works for any business in the world. The first 20% of costs that you cut only results in revenue drops of two to 3%. Basically mm -hmm. there's fat in the system and you've got to figure out where it is. And there's plenty, plenty, plenty fat, right? Number three, diversify. This is not pivoting. This is a good time to add a new line of business, but but there's a catch. The key is cash flow. Never start a line during a recession that, that has outsized future benefits. Only focus on immediate benefits. For instance, I prefer becoming an affiliate for a service that my investors can benefit from because it's quick and painless to turn it on or to turn mm -hmm. it off. Diversify, right? So that's P-O-D. Uh, and then MOR is market. Most people think that they should reduce their marketing budgets during a downturn. That is a stupid idea. It's an insanely stupid idea because today my marketing dollars, my costs are going down. My, my you know, cost per lead is going down. I have less competition. I have higher returns. Why? Because my investors have less options to choose from. I mean, if they were getting 10 emails about 10 projects 12 months ago, now they're getting two or three emails. So I have less competition and I can acquire investors at a lower cost per lead, cost per sale. 
the, the last thing that I want to do is cut my direct marketing budget. I might cut marketeers, but never cut your direct marketing budget boosted. So that's M. O mm. is outsource. And, and I want to leave that one for the last because I have actually a, a, a 60 second demo that I want to show you that I, I'll also be talking about at the conference, right? So I'll mm, go to the yeah. R. The R is retain, right? In good times, customers retain themselves because you're making shit tons of money. They're making shit tons of money. But in a bad time, retaining customers is crucial. Use promotions, use discounts, use loyalty programs, touch them more often, talk to them, nurture them. Remember, you've got to provide excellent customer service during a downtown, right? Downturn. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're stressed. They need your help. They need your assurance. And by the way, this is especially true for all of you who are thinking of having investors because they're the most skittish during a downturn for no reason at all. They won't invest, even though there's no evidence that anything is wrong because they're skittish. Retention is key. So we've done pivot optimize, diversify, market, and retain. Mm. What I haven't done is the outsource piece. So, you know, but I leave it open to questions for you and I'll come back to outsource. That's the big one for me. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen for a second and walk us through that? We just got a couple minutes left here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, and this will take me about three minutes. I think you guys will be blown away. So here, let me see if I can find the right screen. I'm going to find the right screen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me one more minute, guys. Oh, you're right. I want to make sure that we're doing it right. There we go. How about this? Can you see my Google Chrome? Right? It's loading for me. Yep, there you go. All right. So one of my most popular webinars, 10,000 people have watched this, is how I use a foolproof virtual assistant system. I have dozens of dozens of full-time employees in countries across the world. Outsourcing is a fantastic activity at any time, but during a recession, it's absolutely freaking incredible. Just read the reviews of this, right? 10X your business. I have 100 plus practical examples of the entire process. How do I find them? How do I retain them? How do I hire them? But what I want to give you today is not this webinar because it's over an hour long. I want to give you 60 seconds, okay? So I have my assistants, these virtual assistants, I hate calling them that, by the way, they're remote employees. They're not virtual assistants. Virtual assistants is a derogatory word. Currently, they bill 45,000 hours a year, 45,000 hours a year, right? But people ask me, what do they do? That's a lot of hours, right? These are just the departments, just the departments, right? Then you might say, he's bullshitting me. They don't, no virtual assistant can do that. All right. My 60 seconds starts now. (laughs) Earlier today, task oversight and shaming. Here's a virtual assistant shaming me for having overdue tasks. Look at this. Look at this. He's shaming me. Because everyone in my company is held to a standard and the virtual assistants do that. Here's one scheduling webinars with polls. Notice the webinar is today. Here's one creating very complex dashboards with backends. Here's another one creating complex dashboards and reporting with backends, the remote workers in the, in the Philippines. Here's one in India that's sourcing 20 to $50 million multifamily properties through very detailed discussions with owners and brokers. By the way, the report was designed in Slack by a Ukrainian worker so that I get instant feedback. Five minutes after the call, I'm reading what, what he just said to a broker in Florida. Here, this is automated slide creation. When I have an idea, I pick up my phone, I dictate into Slack and a gorgeous slide appears, right? It's not in the screenshot, but it's gorgeous. Here's remote workers in the Philippines that are using chat GPT to work job titles and descriptions, and they're managing entire interview process for my US employees. Here's the open requisitions. Here's us talking with them about indeed.com postings. Here's a remote worker in the Philippines that's managing a US equity partner, my equity partner, his name's Danny Bramer, to help him build, bring millions into an apartment project. So this person, Joe, note, note she works 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific, even though she's in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is managing that process to bring in millions. Here's an a Indian underwriting expert. He, I pay him 25 bucks an hour. His name is Neeraj. Notice he's fixing underwriting mistakes that were made by supposed US experts that I pay $175 an hour to. Here's a Philippine worker that's using zero code Slack tools to provide instant feedback to my entire team on incoming calls and chats. Note these are calls from today. See the screenshot at the top. Here, yesterday, remote team members, they're providing chat GPT training to everyone in the, in the US at the bottom, everyone in the, in, the, in the Philippines, and they're also distributing cash rewards for best department use of chat GPT. 
This is from yesterday. Here, uh, remote workers are logging into extremely complex property management software throughout the United States and providing very detailed reporting telling me exactly how my properties are doing. And here, even better, here's an auditor that's actually auditing my sales team and reporting on their efficiency, their productivity, or their mm -hmm. lack of productivity in real time yesterday. And this one's even better because Big Brother is allowed in the Philippines. This is us tracking the Philippines productivity with extreme <laughs> levels of creativity. They, these guys can't even shit without us knowing, right? <laughs> and then finally, finally, here is them, an auditor reporting on everything that the US team does and everything that the remote employees does. Anyone that falls behind on their tasks is shamed with color. Green, good, red, bad. Wow. Neil, thank you so much. If you guys can say thank you to Neil for sharing that in the chat, that's amazing. Neil, we're, if you can tell, um, Neil is just data driven. I, that's, I'm so excited for you to come speak at Fun Live and show people how you do this, how you build it. You're going to build it live on stage, which is going to be amazing. Um, and I know we're click on time here. I'll, I'll share my screen one last time. You guys can grab all that stuff. Um, now, Neil, did you, was that part of your gift that you were going to have people if they grab tickets today? Yes, there's a 60 minute virtual um, course that actually takes you through the step by step process of finding the very best virtual assistants in the US. It's not fluffy. You'll be given screenshots, steps to follow, filters to use, so you can get rid of 99% of the VAs in the, U in the world, which are not high value and only focus on the 1%. Hmm. I love it. So everyone today will get access to all that stuff from Neil, which is so, and I'm, I'm so excited to have Neil on, uh, on stage at Fun Launch Live with us. Go follow Neil, by the way. Is, what's the best place to follow you online, Neil? Simply type my name into Google, N-E-A-L-B-A-W-A. -A -A. I'm the only Neil Bawa on the World Wide Web. Awesome. So go find Neil, go opt into his funnels and all of his content online. He does an incredible job. Neil, we're so excited to have you. Thank you so much for coming on today. You're a stud. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Bye. All right. Um, go grab that there. We got our next speaker in the backstage. Um, so I, I was going to play this video, but we'll, uh, we'll move on there. I want to just show you guys that are gra grabbing tickets. We just showed flights are like a hundred dollars direct flight. These are the hotels around the convention center about a hundred bucks a night. And that's a, I mean, 181 at a pretty nice resort here. Um, obviously you can get five star if you guys are crazy, but if you're looking at, you know, I, I love what Steve Larson brought up earlier. Um, you know, the question is I, I can't afford it or how can I afford it? Right. To come in and imagine being in the room with Neil Bawa, imagine hearing and learning. Do you think you'll make back more of the price of your ticket off of that one conversation? I would think so. Right. You can, there's a reason this guy manages over a billion dollars. Hey, can you tell, can you tell the reasons why <laughs> it's not? Cause he just woke up one day and he actually learned, he trained himself. He went out and figured out the steps that other people were using and developed some of his own steps. And he's coming literally on stage just to spill all the beans for you guys, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, it's been pretty fun. Our next speaker, has this been good. You guys give me a little, let's do a little uh, giveaway in the chat real quick. I know you guys have been on here for a while. Thanks for staying on here. So we're gonna oh. lock it up. Last chance right now. Okay, that batch is sell is sold or selling out. We're we're or it's sold out. It's sold out. We are closing it in like thirty seconds, and he's gonna raise prices again. So we are closing it and raising prices. Um, so if you guys are checking out or right there, if you guys want to grab all the bonuses from all the speakers today, we are closing it right now. Um, go check out. I'll give you guys like thirty seconds, and you guys can go do that, and then we'll move on to our next speaker which we have coming on, which is so fun. So go do that right now. Um. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll save the next $100 giveaway for after the next speaker. Sound good? So you guys can stand for the next one. Our next speaker, I'll, I'll give you guys like 30 seconds, but I'll intro our next speaker. So our next speaker, um, I actually met at an event. We sat down and had lunch for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half and talked all about the next 10 to 15 years of innovation and technology that's happening right now. And uh, talking about AI, blockchain, supercomputers, um, talking about drone technology, 5G, all the stuff happening in healthcare, et cetera. And this, we're just talking, we met an event. He's like, dude, you know, I wrote a book, right? And I, I went, I got, a, he actually gave me a signed copy of his book. We went and I, I uh, went through just incredible stuff. And then um, anyways, I'm, I digress. We had this incredible conversation. It was really funny. He then came on our podcast. We did a whole show together. And it was just a fascinating episode that we, have, we haven't dropped yet. It'll drop in a few weeks here. Um, so our next speaker is a former attorney general of Nevada, a lawyer by trade, but now has gone out and done incredible things across the board. So if you guys can give a huge intro and welcome on the chat to Mr. George Chanos. George, Hi, welcome on. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? 
Very good. Excited to have you on today. Um, if people, you know, haven't met you before, don't know who you are, can you give us a 30 second to minute overview of you and, and what you're going to talk about here at Fun Launch Live? Yeah. So uh, 30 seconds on the last 30 years. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Um, real quickly, uh, former attorney general of the state of Nevada, um, managed the uh, state's Department of Justice. Um, argued before the United States Supreme Court, 190, have been advising individuals, primarily high net worth individuals and uh, um, corporate leaders uh, for the past 30 years. And um, I've written a couple of books recently. Uh, one is called Seize Your Destiny, A Roadmap to Success, uh, which I wrote for my daughter and my nephew and nieces. And then Millennial Samurai, A Mindset for the 21st Century, which I also wrote for them. Um, and then uh, finally, I'm the uh, uh, an advisor to various corporations, uh, including the chairman of the board of Capriati's and Wingzone, uh, with over 200 locations throughout the United States, um, one of the fastest growing QSRs in the country. Mm, wow. Wow. It's amazing. Now walk us through your book. I actually have a copy right here. I've, I've, uh, I skipped all the fun. I, was, I told you that I, like, I kept skipping through because the chapter titles were so, I was like, I got to read that chapter. And then I went and read this chapter, but walk us through <laughs> yeah. the premise of millennial samurai. Why would you write that book? And this will kind of dovetail into what you're going to speak about at fun Launch Live. but why'd you even write yeah. that book? Yeah. So, um, essentially if, uh, if, if I were to drop you in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, I would, and I were going to give you a survival duffel bag, Millennial Samurai, this book, is your duffel bag, right? Out of all the things that I will leave my daughter and uh, my nephews and nieces, literally the most important thing that I think, I, that I believe that I'm leaving them is the book. And the reason is, is that, you know, you can leave somebody with a treasure chest full of assets, but if they don't know how to use them, and if they don't understand their significance and they don't understand how to protect those assets then um, or multiply those assets, then those assets can easily be taken away or can dissipate. And so um, it's important that there are certain lessons that people learn. And so what I've tried to do is distill what I've learned over the last 30 years and and provide it to others so that they can have better lives. And then I've also looked at the next 30 years. I've looked into the future. I've done research for the past five years. And I've looked into the next 30 years. And I've looked at the technology that's coming and, and how that's going to impact society. And as a complex problem solver, I've tried to understand what that's going to do to our society and the world and how we can best adapt to it, how we can best leverage it, how we can best take advantage of the opportunities and avoid the pitfalls. Mm, I love it. So, and your talk is going to be all around kind of what's coming next. And, and we had a, a fantastic conversation over our Zoom podcast um, about this. What are some, I know, right, the last six months has been just everyone's been enthralled with AI and chat GPT. So let's put that aside for a second, because I know we talk, you can probably talk about that for hours, but what are some other, I know that's one of many, but what are some other technologies or maybe things that couple with that AI that you are very excited about over the next five to 10 years? Well, I think it's, it's, it's not um, so much a particular technology as it is a convergence of technologies. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing giant leaps in a lot of different areas, right? So in terms of materials, for example, um, would, you know, might be a, a, an interesting place to start, which is uh, um, unfortunately an area where China is leading the United States is in materials manufacturing. Mm. And, you know, to give you an example of uh, the power of that, um, there, we're, we're, what we're really talking about is we're talking about computing power and we're talking about data. So we're talking about the speed of computing power, increasing the speed of computing power and increasing the accumulation and aggregation of data. And uh, Yuval Noah Harari spoke in 2018 at the World Economic Forum. And he, he basically said that uh, organisms are algorithms and that if you have enough high speed computing power and you have enough data that you can actually create life. You can recreate uh, the human species, you can create alternative species, 
this is what Harari believes. And uh, uh, so, you know, based on all of the research that he's done. And so the, the potential for these changes is, is both dramatic and alarming. And the speed at which these changes are moving is uh, um, beyond noteworthy. So what you've got is this convergence of high-speed computing data and uh, uh, computing power and the aggregation of data coming together and creating an artificial intelligence um, that, uh, you know, will equal the uh, capacity of the human brain by the end of the decade. And a singularity with, moment, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. what, what uh, has been called singularity, that moment in time when machine intelligence will eclipse human intelligence. So we'll reach that by the end of the decade, according to guys like Ray Kurzweil at Google, and others have now joined. And that seems to be the consensus that we will reach the singularity by the end of the decade. And again, these time frames are somewhat irrelevant because it doesn't really matter whether these things happen, you know, within five years or 10 years or 15 years. They're so dramatic that mm -hmm. when they do happen, they're going to change the world. And so, you know, is the world going to change that dramatically in five years or 15 years? You know, how significant is that question compared to, you know, is it going to change dramatically? And yet, and the answer is yes, it is. And it's coming like a freight train. And we don't really know the exact timing, but we know that it's going to be profound. And mm. so when you look at materials, for example, which we were talking about, yeah. um, when I, uh, a couple of years ago, I was looking at uh, information storage and I discovered glass information storage. And I found that you could uh, store 3000 times as much data on, you could take a, a CD, a normal CD, and you could put 3000 CDs worth of data on a glass disc. And this disc would uh, be re uh, resistant to as much as 3000 degrees in temperature, and it could you know, store for millions of years, and glass information storage was said to be the thing, right? Mm. 3000 times a CD. Well, now they've got diamond discs, and so it's a new materials, right? It's a new way to use material. And essentially what happens is that whether it's, whether it's glass or diamonds, uh, a laser is, is reading this information off the disk in multiple dimensions, right? In glass information storage, it was five dimensions. In, in diamond information storage, I have no idea how many dimensions. Um, mm. But these lasers are able to read these disks and you can fit a billion Blu-ray disks on a diamond disc, wow. right? Jeez. So yeah, so so you think about you think about the the um, huge leaps in technology that are occurring, and it it really um, when we when it when it comes to AI, AI does not follow Moore's law, right? So Moore's law was pretty impressive in and of itself. For the past fifty years, computing power would double and would have in price, in cost. And so- Every, every 18 months, yeah. Yeah, every 18 months. And so now you look at something like ChatGPT and you look at the iteration between ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4 and you see a thousand fold increase in, mm. in capacity, right? And it's not taking 18 months, right? It may have taken four months between ChatGPT yeah. and ChatGPT4. So in a compressed amount of time, you're getting a huge multiple of development. And that's what we're going to see with AI. And so that's why I believe that the speed of change, the, the velocity of change is what is going to catch most people by surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Where yeah, many yeah. people are, are beginning to talk. You know, I was talking about this stuff in 2012, 10 years ago. And uh, I've been, you know, talk about, talking about it since, but... Um, everybody is now starting to talk about these issues where, you know, ChatGPT is, is uh, uh, a well-known uh, new technology and uh, it's entered the, you know, the common discourse. Um, but yeah. what no one is really talking about, what no one is really focused on is how this convergence of technology will create a multiplying effect 
and an acceleration in technological development that we have not, we have simply not seen before, right? So you look at evolution, right? You look at evolution and uh, it goes back. You have this huge curve, right? This just compounding effect curve, a convergence of technology, right? It's just, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Now, George, I'm so sorry. I got I to cut you off. We have our next speaker coming on in just a few minutes. I want to make sure people get your gift that they're going to have. And by the way, as you can tell, George is, if you can tell, we had a, an incredible lunch together. We talked for an, I don't know how long, but you can go on and on and on. And we're, we're so excited to have you come speak. You guys are going to come to fun. I'm going to hear all about this, which is going to be phenomenal. But real quick, George, I know you have a gift for the audience. Um, for people that join today and buy tickets today, what is that gift? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so this book, it's, uh, it's 444 pages. Um, it is essential reading in, in my view. Um, and you can uh, have a free copy of the entire book. You can download the entire book for free at millennialsamurai.com. You can either go to georgejchanos.com or millennialsamurai.com and you can download the entire book for free. Wow, that's awesome, George. So everyone on here can get a, get a free copy of the book, which is amazing. And then you guys can come and hear George on stage go way. I mean, today we had what? eight minutes to talk about this or 10 minutes. Imagine if you had a full hour with George to really dive in and go deep and to hear the ins and outs of what's coming. Do you think that would help you over the next five, 10 years? I'm actually personally, I'm very excited to hear your talk and just, and I'm thinking through the way I can change my business, integrate new technologies, how they're converging, where to invest for the future, which is pretty fun. Um, George, thank you so much for bringing your gift on everything. Again, you guys can go, um, I'll put a, this, this, uh, this last QR code up here. I know Mason is, we are, we've filled up all, most of our spots. I think we have a few spots left right now, right? Batch, yeah. With a new batch. Okay. So he's lost a new batch open of about 15 spots. So if you guys want to go grab those spots, you guys can get George's gifts and all the other gifts from prior speakers. It's pretty cool. Um, which is amazing. George, thank you so much. Is there a good place? Um, I know your book and your website and stuff. Is there a good place for people to follow you online, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, yeah, things like that? I'm on, I'm, I'm on all social media. So you can uh, find George J. Chanos on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, I'm all over the place. Okay. I love it. George, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. If you guys can in the chat, give George a huge thank you. Pretty, I mean, that already got my wheels spinning about all the stuff that's, that's coming out. I'm sure the, the audience as well. So thank you again, George. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Looking forward to seeing you in Miami. Yeah, it's going to be very fun. Thank you, George. Okay. So go grab that link right there. There's the QR code. Mason will drop it one more time. Um, and again, I'll share uh, just right here. I think we shared this earlier, but if you guys are like, man, I got to get to Miami, come to the live event. I mean, look at ticket costs here. This is a one-way flight from Seattle to Miami, $119. This is San Diego to Miami, 114 nonstop flight. New York, $59 nonstop flight. <laughs> Actually, that top one is 20. If you want to fly front, Frontier, $29 <laughs> Frontier. Uh, Salt Lake City to Miami is 54 uh, or 129 for direct flight. So there's no excuse not to come here. George live on stage is pretty cool. So thank you so much, George. Um, we'll prep our, let's prep our next speaker. I think we have our next speaker backstage. Um, so go grab that link there. Oh yeah, there she is. Perfect. Okay, our next speaker you guys can tell we're just rapid fire here. This is, this is pretty fast. Is this by, by the way, uh, has this been insightful? It's been good. Oh, people remind me, we got to do the, uh, the giveaway. Okay. We had a hundred dollar giveaway. Um, I know I wanted to give you guys time to grab that QR code. So let me do a hundred dollar giveaway right now. And then we'll bring on our next speaker. Um, oh shoot. I went wrong way. Okay. Um, so you guys ready? If you guys can type in the chat, um, type in, this has been awesome. How about that? Type that in the chat. <laughs> this has been awesome for a hundred dollars to Nike, hundred dollars to Nike. This has been awesome. Um, type that in the chat and then uh, I'm going to pick somebody five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Steve Bolton, Steve Bolton. Congrats. You got a hundred dollars to Nike. Uh, Steve, congrats. Send a, send a private message to Mason with your email and he'll send you over a gift card. Um, just in a few minutes. Um, additionally, we, um, we actually today, just so you guys are aware, on, on the ticket prices, they are all discounted. We've been we've been doing these batches. Every speaker so far has given out gifts for the audience that you get for buying a ticket today, which is pretty awesome. So now on that, let's introduce our next speaker. She's already, her face is already up here, um, which is so exciting. Let me give a little background on Vina. Um, Vina, we had on a show, on our show a little bit ago, I met Vina a few times, incredible entrepreneur, fund manager, and actually her talk is entitled how um, she raised $50 million in eight weeks as a full-time mother, which is so cool. Has over 300 million AUM amongst her funds. And so if you guys can give a huge round of applause in the chat to Vina Jetty. Vina, welcome on. Good to have you here. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. 
Awesome. How are you? Ah, uh, very good. Happy to have you on. So if people uh, don't know you, have never seen you before, give us, you know, a, a 30 second, one minute overview of you, your funds, your businesses, and what you're going to talk about at Fun Launch Live. Absolutely. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to be here and I'm excited to speak at Fun Launch Live. I'm Vino Jetty. I run a company called Vive Funds. I'm a large multifamily owner operator with a focus in the Sun Belt on Class B value add assets. Uh, today, we focus on deals that are 75 million plus, 200 plus doors. Um, as Bridger said, I have about 300 million in AUM. We bought and sold seven deals in Q1 and Q2 of last year. So the portfolio has shrunk. Uh, we're really excited to expand it again this year. Um, at Fun Launch Live, I'm going to be talking about raising private equity and raising capital uh, for your deals the right way, but how to get to really the scale of raising capital. Uh, so uh, last year, one of our deals, we raised $50 million in eight weeks to close our deal. And I'm going to teach you guys all of the things that it took me years and years and years and hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions to learn. And I'm so excited about it. I'm bringing the good stuff, Bridger. <laughs> I know. I love it. I'm very excited for, for you to get in the weeds and all this. And also I love adding there as a full-time mother. And I think a lot of people here kind of have this concept, you know, if I have kids or if I'm in a certain area of life or I'm old or I'm too young, I can't do a fund or this doesn't work for me. And you're living proof that you can do it. Walk, walk us through that story. Actually. How did, how did you go about doing that with kids, with a family? Yeah. Walk us through that. Yeah. Well, it's really hard to be a part-time mom. So I just have to always be a full-time mom, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I have twin three and a half year old daughters and I started this way before I had kids, right? So like multifamily was actually my first baby. My kids are my <laughs> second and third children. Yeah. But for me, what was really striking and what was really tough is I had this whole idea of what my life was going to be like when I was a mom. I thought, you know, I'll have a nanny and my life will not change and I will just you know, like I'll come and go into their lives and I'm sure I'll like them enough. And, you know, I didn't know I didn't have kids. Um, what I didn't realize is having kids is very similar to having a business. You never stop thinking about them. You mm -hmm. even right now, right. I'm at work and my kids are with their cousins and their au pair and my sister and my mom, but I'm still worrying about like, did they eat? Are they, you know, getting what they need? Did they, they flew there. So did they land safely? Like all these things are continuously moving. And that's really how it is when you're investing in multifamily too, or in just into anything, right. Or raising capital is your mind is always focused on your businesses. And so it really wasn't too much of a shift to have children. What was harder for me is learning how to balance all of it. And to get that work-life balance has been really a struggle and a challenge, quite honestly. Um, but you know, I'm making it work. I'm learning about it. <laughs> I love it, Vina. And you have such a good attitude about everything. I love your approach to, um, it's actually funny. I'll tell you a quick story. So Vina came to one of our black card summits in Mexico. So flew out there. So just, you guys are aware we have a group called black card. It's like our top group that all of our fund managers that we help launch their funds with them. We bring in lawyers, we bring in pitch deck designers, to help them launch funds. We launched 120 funds last year out of black card. So Vina actually came to one of our events. It was in Cancun. All of our fund managers flew out. And we actually had a pitch competition. So what we did at the event is we had all these round tables and everyone had, I think it was 90 seconds to pitch your table. And then we would, uh, that each table would pick their favorite pitch. And then that table would then pitch the neighboring table and like compete. And we slowly went around and Vina actually won the entire competition. There was like 150 fund managers there. She was the top pitch um, for everybody, which it just tells you a lot about her and just to be on the spot and to know her stuff which is pretty cool. So, um, uh, yeah, Vina is the real deal and excited to have you come speak. Um, I can't remember what was, what was your, uh, your big angle you took on that pitch competition. I can't remember what you said. Um, I think we were talking about the strategy. Maybe I can't remember either. I have pitched my deals a billion times, so I can't ever remember what the one <laughs> was. I think we were given like, either you have to talk about your team. Oh, your asset class. That's what I pitched. Mm, yeah. Is your team, your asset class or your strategy. And so I obviously pitched multifamily class B value add multifamily. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Now, Vina, the, the question I've been asking everybody right now is, you know, right now with interesting economic times um, that we're in, how have you adjusted your, your fund and your deals and your pitch for the yeah. current economic time we're in right now? Well, right now we're actually looking at expanding, right? This is our growth mode time is when the economy is actually not doing as well. This is when we have an opportunity for real growth and real opportunity. We're excited about this. Uh, but as far as our pitch to investors, uh, the 
the conversation has shifted, right? Because before we would talk about, you know, these are the returns and this is why we like multifamily and it's, you know, so exciting and you can make a whole bunch of money and everyone's making money. Now the conversation is more centered around, here's the downside risk. Here's how we are mitigating that risk. Here's what we've done to be more conservative. We're talking about debt rates a lot, what capital markets are doing. Um, as an example, we just closed a deal a couple months ago and we went in with fixed rate debt and we leveraged only 50%, which is highly unusual. You mm, yeah. we would go to like 70, 72, 75%. That was not an issue. It was not a concern. It was still conservative. Um, today, we've actually become more conservative. And so it's that communication around risk factors and reassuring investors that you're taking proper steps to mitigate the risk in today's environment. Mm, I love that. So bringing more cash to the table. Let, yeah, let deaths in the deals. But do you guys have the idea to then hopefully in a couple of years refinance those yeah. and pull cash off the table? So we're we're fairly conservative when we underwrite. So we don't actually underwrite with the idea that we'll ever refinance during our planned hold period. If mm. we do, great. We'll increase our IRR and our equity multiple and our returns to investors. So it's just like a cherry on top. Uh, you know, one thing I've learned is investors never, ever, ever get mad when you give them more money than they thought they were going to get. So <laughs> yeah. we like to operate on that side of the spectrum. So we never plan for a refinance on our pro forma underwriting that we put out to investors. Internally, we're always looking for an opportunity to either relever, uh, maximize efficiency on the capital stack, or go and exit possibly early. So we always look for that opportunity for our investors. Gotcha. Love it. Yeah. Always good to under promise and over deliver, right? For those investors, exactly. which is great. Exactly. And you guys have done a good job of that, which is just amazing. Now, Vina, I know, sorry, we're quick on time here. I know we're running people through here. I know you brought a gift today for people that buy tickets today and join or come you're going to come here. You speak live on stage at Fun Launch Live talking about specifically how you raised $50 million in eight weeks as a full-time mother and did this whole thing together. So what's the gift that you brought today? So I have Vina's vault, which is where I put all of my Zooms, all of my trainings, and I put a lot of resources in there. So, you know, social media posts that you can use on your social media, downloads, checklists, um, you know, broker information, all that stuff is in there. And so today I'm going to be giving everybody that buys a ticket um, a discount for that. And so you guys can join that and you'll be able to watch those videos forever and ever and ever. You'll be sick of hearing me talk by the time you're done watching all those videos. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Who wants access to Vina's vault? That sounds amazing. Uh, I want, I want to watch those. That sounds great. Um, so again, everyone that buys today will get access to Vina's vault, uh, zoom recordings, trainings. What's, what's kind of an idea of what kind of trainings are in there? So we talk about everything from mindset. We talk about raising capital. We talk about investor avatars so you can speak to your audience correctly. We talk about the fundamentals of multifamily real estate. We talk about basics. We do multifamily math. It's just everything and anything you can think of as it relates to raising capital, funds, managing funds, managing investors, best practices, um, multifamily fundamentals. All of that is in there. Oh, I love it. That's amazing, Vina. Thank you so much for doing that for everybody. That's that's awesome. So again, everyone that joins today, grab that QR code. That's specific to Vina as well. So grab that QR code. You guys can go grab Vina's Vault, which is so cool. What a, I love the name too, Vina's Vault. You can go grab Thank all you. that stuff in there as well. Um, now, uh, also, Vina, what is the best way that people can follow you on social media or find you online? Yeah, it's really easy. My name, Vina Jetty, is my handle on pretty much everything. You can join my Facebook group, Mastering Multifamily with Vina Jetty. Um, just answer the questions. Cool. We'll oh, I love it. So yeah, go, uh, go follow Vina online and something I just, I'll mention this. I brought stuff for other speakers, but, um, the reason I want you guys to go follow them is so that you can build a base and we're giving these gifts away. So you can build a, build a base that when you show up to fun launch live, you're not coming in blind. You're like, Oh, I have all, I've like learned from Vina. I already get it. And then when she speaks on stage, it can build on, on top of what you've already learned and you can get way more out of the event. I've gone to events where I kind of just go in blind. I'm like, oh, I don't really know. And I've gone to other events where I've prepped myself and I show up and I'm like, it's the most impactful event I've ever been. And then also I'm guessing Vina is going to hang out the event and you can be like, Hey, Vina, I've been going through Vina's vault the last month. It's been awesome. I have a question for you on this or X, Y, Z. And I don't know, champ maybe Vina is going to partner with you or do a deal with you or want to be on your contact list or whatever. Like if you show up and you're smart and articulate and like have done the work, you're way more likely to partner or be friends with or whatever with Vina rather than somebody that's like, Hey Vina, we just met. I, I don't know who you are. So you okay. mentioned like Steve Larson came on earlier. He became Russell Brunson's right-hand man by essentially doing that at an event. So this is something yeah. you can do with Vina and other speakers at the event, which is cool. So 
totally. And we Nina. invest invest in people's deals too, right? So if you have that relationship with us, tell us about your deal while we're there. Yep. Yeah. These guys and yeah, a lot, all the speakers coming, they're they're not just like somebody that's retired from 50 years ago. These are active fund managers, people that are actively buying and selling deals. They want to actually transact. They want to build their own network as well, which is so cool. Vina, thank you so much for coming on today. Go follow Vina Jetty, take a, a screenshot or whatever, make sure to go find her on, on social media. And then also everyone that joins today gets Vina's vault, which is so cool. Vina, thank you so much for coming on today. Appreciate you. Thanks, Bridger. See you Thank you. See ya. Yeah, we'll see you in Miami. Grab this QR code. We'll leave it up for another uh, another minute here just to refresh everyone's memory. So when you join today, also you get all the cool stuff from all the speakers. So you get pro formas, pitch deck designs, PDF templates. If you guys have been watching this whole time, you see all the cool stuff. Additionally, um, we have a full app for networking before the event to again, prep for the event. Awesome merch at Fun Launch Live. You get some of these cool t-shirts, et cetera. Um, we have that as well. You get a partner pricing discount. So if you guys buy multiple tickets, I think it's super valuable to bring partners and even your spouse. Like I love bringing my spouse to events so that we're on the same page about stuff. Um, we have it there. Total value, um, priceless. <laughs> um, and then as a bonus, we have a full course that I'm we're building out on how we throw events, how we do big and small events. You guys can see as well if you want to throw your own events. Um, all right there. And then also all the gifts from today's speaker value of priceless, total value priceless. Today for four, it was $4.97. I think we sold out the first 25 spots. Mason has increased, I think it's like by 15 or $20 per ticket. So like it's, I think it's five twenty dollars right now. Um, we have about fifth. Well, let's see how many spots left, Mace. Like eight spots left in this drop, something like that. We got about eight spots left on this drop before he'll raise prices again. Um, so if you guys want to grab tickets, there they are. Go grab um, that link and we'll leave it open for like one more minute while we have our next speaker coming on. Our next speaker is a star of a television show online. I'm going to just tease it for a second. Star of a TV show. One of the, actually an active fund manager. I think they manage about a hundred million dollars. He can come confirm. Also has one of the most, I would say, I'm just going to say it, the most unique financing and way that they're buying hundreds of homes right now in Q2 of 2023, they are going out and buying hundreds of homes right now using a very unique financing strategy. And actually this speaker, I've, I've asked him to come to Funlots Live and, and share for people that are like just starting out. Sometimes it feels so in big, like, man, all these people run billion dollar funds and have these big deals. I've asked this next speaker to come and talk about like doing your very first deal. If you've never done a single deal before and you want to get into, especially specifically real estate, this speaker is going to talk about all of that, which is pretty cool. Now, some of you guys may, may know who he is from his TV show and online presence. He puts out incredible videos on the internet. You guys can give a huge welcome to Mr. Pace Morby. There's Pace right there. Um, host of a es Triple Digit Flip, expert in creative deal financing. Uh, Pace, welcome on. How are you doing? Oh, I can't hear you. There you are. Bro, you are one of my heroes. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, Pace, good to be here. Now, by the way, you and Vina are like together right now in the same building, aren't you? I'm going to I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip, okay? Everybody out there in the audience, here's a pro <laughs> tip. Go to events and become friends with the speakers, okay? Mm. Vina Jetty, who is one of my heroes, she is unbelievable. I've done deals with her, fund to fund structures where I've gone to her and said, can I raise money for you? Like, you are so unbelievable. I want to raise money for you and your big deals. And where did I meet her? I met her by going to events and talking to the speakers. And now she hang, we hang out all the time. My, I'm friends with her, her husband. She's friends with me, obviously. We love each other. She's friends with my wife. She stays in our guest house when she's in Phoenix. Dude, this is why you go to events in person is because you can only do so much on Zoom. There's only so much you can do on Instagram Live and YouTube. You got to go to these events and become friends with the speakers and do deals with them. Vina Jetty will single-handedly make me, probably, what do you think, $3 billion in my lifetime? <laughs> at least she says at least. So yeah, um, guys, yeah. it's a pro tip. It's, it's one of the reasons why speakers like me, I don't go in the green room really. I go into the hallway because that's where I find my deals. That's where I find my head of investor relations. It's where I, I find my acquisition managers. It's where I find people to come and collaborate and actually do deals with. So I'm so excited and so grateful to be coming to your event. Bridger, guys, I want to meet you in the hallway. I want to talk to you about where you're investing, why I like it, what I can do to help you in your business. What, what, do you, what contact do you need in my phone? I will hand whatever the contact is in my phone to you if you, you and I meet in the hallways at Bridger's event. <laughs> I love it. It's funny. We spoke at a, at a similar event a couple months ago. And it was funny. I walked in and I, and I was walking by and I, I was like, huh, like that's, and you were just, you were just walking through the hallways. And I was like, that's Pace Morby. 
And like you were walking around people. I'm like, does, do these guys know who that is? And it was before you, you spoke. And then a couple people recognized you and stuff. And I was like, and then I went up and talked to you. We just said hi. And we, we, we talked for a minute. And I'll just say this, like some people that are on TV or other stuff, you know, they have this celebrity thing where they're never around. Pace is a dude that's just like salt of the earth down. Like I'll, he'll talk to anybody. He'll do it. He'll just handshake. Like, I, I just want to meet you. I want to do deals. With you. I'm going to help you out and just truly has an amazing heart. And it's one of the reasons I want you to come speak pace just because I, I look up to you. I think you're, you have incredible heart and soul and just, you're here to serve and bless people, which is phenomenal. Now um, we only have, we're limited time here today. What is, you know, fun launch live. I've asked you to speak. I know you run big funds. You do huge deals, but I've asked you to speak specifically on people doing their very first deal. People that maybe in the, in the group are like, man, this just people like Vina are just doing crazy deals. And you like, they're just, they're so high level. How do I even start? Walk us through kind of the stuff you're going to share on stage with people that are just starting out. I'm going to I'm going to put myself in the same brain space I was in when I first started, and I felt like this. Meaning, there's 50 different directions you can go, and the challenge in real estate, I'd say the biggest challenge in real estate is deciding which avenue you follow, because there's so many ways to win, and there's so many ways to succeed. It and also so many markets and so many mm-hmm. strategies. Do I go fund to fund? Do I go after a single? Do I go multifamily? Do I go commercial? What, what, what do I do? And you end up having all these heroes in the space, right? Bridger Pennington's been a hero of mine for years and you hear them and they inspire, inspire you. And then you go, I'm going to do what they do. And then 15 minutes later, you hear somebody else, you go, I'm going to do what they do. Mm. I'm going to distill all that down. And I'm going to give you guys a very, very simple, very, very simple equation to figure out what is your strategy as an individual. And then I'm going to give you the actual steps. I'm not an ambiguous mindset guy. I am a contractor by trade. That's what I learned when I was in my you know early teens and my twenties, I was a contractor. I was open door and offer pad and Zillow's biggest contractor. I, I built big teams to do all their renovations. As a contractor, I can't do anything without a blueprint. And so I can't watch things on video. I can't Um, necessarily even read a book about it. I need somebody to show me the steps. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the steps non-ambiguously, very specifically, you will be taking notes and you will go home with very actionable steps where you go in like 24 hours, you can get your first deal. That simple. Okay. And Mm, uh, it doesn't matter if it's single family, multifamily, but I then will walk through a couple of very simple deals that I will have done that week. Not deals I did last month, I will wait until the week of the event and I will pull a couple of deals out and I'll break a few of those down very, very simply and say, see, using this equation that I taught you for 15 minutes, this is how you could have gone out and gotten these deals this week. This this is a deal I closed on last week. Um, and we close on probably two deals a day. Like Vina at my house is <laughs> watching me sign with a mobile notary. We're buying two deals usually a day. Wow, that's <laughs> that's amazing. And by the way, I, I think it's funny, I, you know, sometimes you hear people that are do house flipping shows or stuff. And you're like, man, are they actually doing it? Is it faked? Is it spoofed? I don't know about other shows, but Pace, you guys are the real deal. And you guys do this inside and out. Walk me through, like even this, let's just say this year, 2023, everyone's like, it's the worst time ever to get in real estate. How many deals have you guys bought this year so far? Uh, I will buy 500, I will do 500 acquisitions this year. Okay. And multifamily, probably about 10 to 15 acquisitions. And single family, 450 to 470 acquisitions, closed transactions in the portfolio. Jeez. Most people guys don't do are that rolling. in lifetime. We will do that in one year. Yeah. I mean, you guys are rolling right now. And it's so it's funny. You, you see people that are super nervous in 2020. I'm not going to do anything. You look at guys like Pace, like, man, I'm going to take advantage of what's going on right now. We have such a cool opportunity to get in this space and roll deals. One of the next, which is so cool. Now, I know we're going to talk about getting started Walk us through you. You run some big funds as well right now. Or you're launching funds currently, right? Yeah, I've done I've done some stuff with Vina. So I've raised money for Vina's funds through fund to fund structure. Um, we are I'm a GP on a handful of deals. I've got a 587 unit deal in Houston that we're currently working. I just closed on a 256 unit deal, all seller finance in Illinois. Uh, Twenty million dollar purchase, zero dollars out of my pocket. Didn't even have to raise capital for the deal. Um, my main strategy is all creative finance. So I go to sellers directly. Um, sorry for you guys that are brokers out there, but I actually bypass most of the brokers. Um, and I go directly to sellers and I'm acquiring big pieces of real estate, not just single family, but a lot of multifamily by, by taking over the existing debt or having the seller create debt between the two of us through a promissory note. And the sellers are seller financing me. So We'll yep. buy, we'll probably buy $150 million this year in real estate just through seller finance and, and creative finance. 
you guys don't know what seller financing means, I think Pace has put out the best content on the whole internet for this. Go find Pace on YouTube or on just wherever. I'm sure you post it everywhere. Is, is Actually, is YouTube the best spot, Pace, to find you? Yeah. And just to point that out to you guys, I'm really stupid. So I make really stupid, dumbed down content for people that are like me. So if you're stupid, go watch my stuff because you'll understand it. I, te- I teach as if I'm talking to a third grader. Hmm. Which is, I, I, yeah, I love that too. Some people get so esoteric on content stuff. I, that's what I love about you. It's just simple. It's down to earth. And, it, and by the way, if you guys can't tell it, Fun Launch Live, like I, I hate, I, when I go to events and things are just so esoteric and a high level and mindset and like, you got to win it and earn it. Like there's, I guess there's a place for that every once in a while, but I've, I've actually asked all of our speakers at Fun Launch Live, like they need something, and Pace mentioned it. I need something that they're actual that you can write down, take home and Pace. I'm so, that's why I invited you to speak. Cause I'm like, I know he can deliver on this. He delivers on this every single day on YouTube and across the board, which is phenomenal. Um, Pace, we're getting, we're getting short of time here. I know you have a gift for people that have come that are going to buy tickets that are coming. What is that? And then I want to hear a few other questions from you, but what is that gift for people that have joined today under your link? I'm going to give away Vina Jetty's vault. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually have something really special. So we had investors that we raised millions of dollars from, and they partnered with us on some deals. And what I did as a bonus to them is Vina Jetty and myself did a two-day masterclass in Dallas where we flew them in first class. We put them in a hotel and we gave them a day in class and then a day out in the field. And we recorded this entire thing, brought in attorneys. CPAs. We brought in, um, who, who else did we bring in? We brought in public, adjusters. public adjusters. And it was just one of the most unbelievable classes I've ever, even me, I'm sitting in the audience. It's a small group of 15 people, just 15 people. And I'm sitting in the audience asking questions to Vina Jetty and Vina's in the audience asking questions to some of the special guest speakers. That, uh, that weekend cost me $75,000 to put together of real mm-hmm. money as a way to show thank you to our investors we've bundled that up and and put that in a very private little vault. I will give that away to you guys. It will just, it's the way I need to learn. It's the way I need to learn. So we're going to give that away. It cost me 75 grand. You can't find it anywhere. I don't sell it. It's not available to anybody. This is the first time I've ever given that away. Wow. Pace. Holy crap. What a, what a gift you guys that you guys are going to get. Um, when you, when you're coming to fun, our slide, you can prep and watch before $75,000 to throw an event just for your private investors, right? Too, which is phenomenal pace. That's amazing. And then couple that with Vina's vault. You guys are going to be just uh, blown away, it's, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so pace, oh, you know, one last question, then we'll, and we'll have people follow you on social media, et cetera. Uh, how are I asked Vina a similar question? How are you guys? And I think you already gave the answer, but how are you preparing and approaching an economic downturn right now? Uh, interest rates rising, how, what's your team and, and whether it's personal finance or your, or your business across the board, what are you guys doing right now? Interest rates do not affect me negatively. Interest rates affect me in a positive way, which means that the, uh, everybody else in the world is going through pain points. I'm taking over people's interest rates that were originated in 2018, 19, 20, and 21 at 3%. I just got a big piece of property in, in Hawaii, right on the ocean at 2% interest. So interest rates don't affect me. How am I preparing? Guys, I've been preparing for the last couple of years, and I've been praying to our universe for the interest rates to go up. Because if you know what I know, this is the time to make it rain. Creative finance is having its day in the sun for now, for now and the next 48 months. If you guys learn a couple of little tidbits of how to acquire properties with no cash, no credit, no credentials, you will dominate. And instead of you being fearful of the market, you will go, oh my gosh, I, 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 I can take action tomorrow, own a property next week without a credit check, without a bank involved, with, without even in some ways, even raising capital. If you guys are saying, I'm not ready to raise capital yet, I'll show you all of that stuff. Oh, I love it. Pace more of everybody go follow them online. Um, grab all that, that, um, that whole event, which is amazing. $75,000 two day event with Vina and him together for people that join buy tickets today. You guys get that along with all the other speaker gifts from today, prior pitch deck designs, pro formas, PDFs, Vina's vault, etc. cetera, which is so cool. Pace. I want to thank you so much. I'm excited to talk to you in person, hang out more at fun launch live and you guys be able to meet pace and Vina all at fun launch live as well, which is so cool. So thank you so much. My, my last thing, my last thing I want to say is that I will be in the hallway. So you guys make a note and say, my goal is when I go to that event, Come into the hallway. You'll meet me and Vina. We'll probably hang out with each other. I don't let her leave my side because I'm constantly learning things from her. But we'll be standing next to each other. Yeah, great. We can do photos and all that kind of stuff. But I want to talk to you about your actual business. Come to this event. Come talk to me and Vina. We want to get to the nitty gritty about whatever question you have. And we'll be out in the hallway hanging out, meeting all of you guys.
No, I love it. That's, uh, that's going to be amazing. Pace, Vina, thank you guys so much for coming on today. You guys are amazing. Thank you, brother. See ya. See ya. Wow, that is going to be phenomenal. I'm so excited to have them on. Um, oh, it's going to be so fun. So again, grab that link. Um, I think uh, we've got, I don't know, I'm, I've Mason on spots or anything. Yeah, uh, Mason's pulling the numbers right now. We'll give him a second here. But again, so you guys don't know, Fun Lots Live is May 10th through the 12th, Miami, Florida. At the beginning of this webinar, we were 82% sold out. I don't know now what the number is. is it's going to be a lot higher than that. 80, okay, 86, 87% sold out in the last hour. We are, by the way, we sold out three weeks before last year's event. So if you're on the fence, like, ah, oh, should I come? Should I come meet Pace Morby in person in the hall? Uh, I don't know. We're about to sell out. We're going to sell out here, we think, in the next little bit. As far as all the bonuses, they go away today. So if you're like, on the, I, and also prices will go up to $1,000 a ticket. That's what we do. We just, as you guys aren't aware, how we sell tickets, we just start low and we just slowly go up in price all the way to a thousand dollars a ticket. That's how we sell tickets. That's how we did it last year. That's what we're doing this year. Um, we are at 86, right? 86% sold out, 86% sold out right now and rising. Um, so that's only what 14% of tickets are left. And we still have what five weeks left to the event. And so we are going to sell out here. Probably we think in the next couple, like week or two, totally sold out. And that's at a thousand dollars a ticket sold out an event. So today we are raising prices and everything. You guys are amazing. Go grab it there. Again, here's your flights to Miami. Super cheap. I mentioned this earlier, um, et cetera. Go grab Pace's link there. And I wanted to share. Um, okay. Link in description. And then you, it's a lot easier. Just click the link in the description. Way easier. I had a, I just wanted to show you guys, if you missed this. Okay. I wanted to show this video and then we'll bring on our next speaker. Here we go. All right. All right. That's going to be so fun. fun stuff. Sorry if the audio didn't work. That was my bad, I guess. We'll, we'll play it again in a minute, but I won't replay it for you. Um, okay. So it's been pretty fun. We got Funlots Live coming. You guys can come meet speakers, handshake. And I'll just, I'll just tell you, I know we're like pushing Funlots Live, like come to Funlots Live. I, I am a, I am a product of events. Um, let me, sorry, let me get back to pace here. There we go. Um, I'm a product of events. That's why I had this mission and dream to throw a big event. Um, me and Mason literally went to actually one of the events we went to was Steve Larson, one of the speakers coming, we went to his event. It is the full reason we launched fund launch. Um, one of the reasons I started my first fund was I was so, I was scared. I learned about it from my dad. I didn't know what to do. And I remember I went to this event, I heard the speaker and it, it just changed my whole mindset on approaching risk. And he talked about, um, and I'll just share quickly and then we'll bring on our next speaker. Um, this whole mindset shift on risk and how you look at risk. Cause I remember asking, I was like, man, it sounds so risky. I don't, I don't have a lot of money. I was in college at the time. So I was like, I don't have a ton of money. I'm, I'm, I want to take a chance. It was a, it was a different business. I'm like, I want to do this business. I don't know what to do. Should I take the risk, but I should, should I just stay in school? Maybe I'll get my MBA and then I'll take the risk later. And the speaker, I, I was in the back of the room. I talked to him at the end of the, at the end of his talk. And he said, what do you mean risk? And I said, well, no, it's like risky. Like I could lose it all. I could go and I don't know what'll happen. Like, I wonder if this business fails. And he goes, hold on, Bridger, hold on. He goes, how much like money do you have? And I was like, I don't know, like five grand, right? Saved up. <laughs> He's like, okay, you got five grand. Um, what happens if you lose it all? Like what happens? Okay, you lose your five grand. Do you have a friend or a family member or somebody you could move in with? And if you lose it all, and I was like, well, yeah, I could probably move in with a friend or family. And he's like, would they have a bed for you, a place on the floor you could sleep in, maybe a food full of fridge or something, or a fridge full of food that you could eat and stuff? And I said, well, yeah, like honestly, if I hit rock bottom, I'm like, yeah, I could, I could probably swing something. And he goes, we're not talking about the same level of risk right now. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, your risk, your downside is five grand, and you get a move in with someone who loves and cares for you with a fridge full of food. 
That's better than 90% of the world lives today is your worst case scenario. And I was like, huh, it's pretty interesting. And he says, if you're with the concept of asymmetrical risk, you know, you, know, you hear like high risk, high reward, low risk, low reward. Asymmetrical risk is high return for relatively low risk. He goes, right now, your downside is five grand. Your upside is infinite. That's asymmetrical risk. And I was like, huh, interesting way to look at. And he goes, for me, he goes, I'm like 45 years old. I have hundreds of employees, et cetera. He goes, if I take a risk right now, a lot of people may not eat. I lose hundreds of millions of dollars. If you take a risk, you have super big upside. Who are you not taking a risk? And I remember this speaker, it really pushed me over the edge and said, you know what? I'm going to be this entrepreneur. I'm going to, and for me, it was like, put my face on, on camera or go start my fund and raise capital for people, even though I didn't know if I could do it. And it totally changed my life. And I, I'm just a product of events. And that's why when me and Macy started fund launch, I kept telling him like, dude, we got to throw an event because we benefited so much from previous people who spent the millions of dollars, did all the marketing and got on camera. This isn't like, I don't crave being on, I don't crave doing this. We do it because we want to serve and help more people. I want to help more people have access to what I had. I had an incredible father and brother that taught me about funds. I want to have you guys have the same opportunity and we're spending literally over a million dollars, bringing in speakers, flying them in from around the world to accumulate them into one spot so that you can come and attend and be a beneficiary of all this knowledge of billions of dollars managed all in one spot. That's why we do it. And so um, I just wanted to share with you guys. I, I, I know you can sometimes like, oh, what's the, like, you know, we really do it out of love. We do it out of service. And yeah, we, you know, there's ticket sales and we make some money sometimes and et cetera. But like, I, I make money running my fund. I make, I, I fund launch for me is, totally about impact and scaling this message around the world. I want more people to know about this world of funds. I, I'm so sick of it being locked up in Wall Street. I'm sick of it being locked up in Wharton and Stanford business schools and regular people like me and you had no idea what this world was until now. And that's why we do it. That's why we throw big events like Fun Launch Live and spend all this time and money and energy and throw webinars like this is to help regular people like me and you learn this game. So Oh, I just wanted to share that with you guys that we do this, you know, it's a, it's a very, I, I think of it as a, like we're serving our audience every single day. So with that, I want to bring on our next speaker who is someone that has served our community like crazy. I met um, our next speaker. His name's Ryan Miller. You can probably see his name right there. So our next speaker, Ryan, um, we met as a, uh, you know, in our community was a guy that was out, actually in Canada that was doing crazy stuff in the venture capital space was raising tons of money and then said, he's like, Hey, I want to come in and I want to serve your audience as well. And actually Ryan, along with raising money and doing his own deals, came in and said, I'll, I'll help coach and serve and mentor a lot of people in our group. And I think there's probably people in this webinar that have worked with Ryan directly. And if I, I keep getting text messages like, dude, Ryan is incredible. This guy has changed my life. He's helped me move my fund and change stuff. And it's just been remarkable. The, the, he's helped dozens and dozens of funds launch and raise millions of dollars across the board and also his own funds and deals, which is so cool. So if you guys can give a huge welcome in the chat to Mr. Ryan Miller. Ryan, welcome on, brother. How you doing? Hey, good. Thanks for having me, Bridger. After an introduction like that, I don't know what else I could say, but I'll do my best. <laughs> well, Ryan, you're amazing. And, and back you. to that, you know, servant leadership type, I think you just put that all together in one piece. And people that don't know Ryan, you will meet him on stage and you're going to feel his generosity and sincerity when he speaks and shares and coaches and really comes out of a servant place where he wants to just help people become better human beings, which is so cool. So Ryan, I know you gave you a little bit of an intro. If you can give us a, <laughs> you know, give us a, a 30 second to a minute thumbnail on you, your background, and your history. Sure. So I, I started my career back in 2008. I just want to be an investment banker when I grow up, but don't worry, everybody. I've repented of my sinful ways and I turned into a rebel. <laughs> so R Bridger uh, emulates that. And I, and I certainly hope to, to help carry uh, Bridger and Mason carry that torch of rebellion. So uh, after 2008, that was a fun year to try to get a job, wasn't it? So for those of you that uh, were lucky enough to graduate during that year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, uh, as a result of being a recovered asset manager, I actually had to move back to Canada. That's where I'm from. And I rebuilt my career uh, and I started consulting through uh, in, for equity, right? So Bridger teaches community. You can either buy your way in or work your way in. Uh, I was a new grad, just lost my job. I didn't have any money. So I decided to work my way in. Uh, built my first venture capital portfolio. I just finished grad school at the time. So I was really good at building financial models. I went on to build that, uh, graduated in a huge multiple uh, in my first five years. And uh, then I went on to manage a quarter billion dollar IT projects portfolio 
portfolio where uh, we helped improve uh, modern portfolio management theory on the tech side. And then uh, I was the chief financial officer of an insurer tech company. Uh, now I sit on the board of a pharmaceutical company. I've got some funds that I'm standing up and moving it all to the Canada. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we could keep going, but I've, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't sit down for long. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I love it. And, and uh, so as you can tell, Ryan, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff across the board, but I think primarily in the venture capital space, correct, Ryan? That's right. Where your bread, that's where your bread and butter is. So that's uh, walk us through, you know, right now, VC markets and, and a lot of maybe people on this call are like, I'm a, I'm a venture cat or I'm a, I'm a startup company looking to raise capital. So yeah. I know so far, if you guys have been listening so far, we've talked a lot about like raising a fund or raising, you know, an external fund for, for other things, but also what about raising money for your own business? If you're a startup company trying to raise capital or get an investor just to help you with your business, Ryan, walk, walk us through some, some tips or tricks that you'd give somebody that's maybe starting a small startup and wants to go raise capital in this space, in this economic climate. What would you, what advice would you give them? Bridger, I absolutely love that question. I can get it, uh, get into it on a couple of areas. So number really when you want to raise capital, the name of the game is you want to get organized. And, and so chunking that down, the two areas you want to get organized are long game and short game strategies. You don't do them sequentially. You don't do short game and then long game. You do them both at the same time. Short game strategy is really just smile and dial for any of you that have had fun being on, uh, what do they call them, boiler rooms or any kind of phone sales or anything, you're going to feel like that a little bit. So uh, it can be fun. So, uh, but really the name of the game in the beginning is just building a list of potential investors. And I'll let Bridger, if you want me to go in depth on how to do that, uh, we can try that. But really just building a list of investors. I always say, and we say in this program, you want at least... Uh, 50 names, five zero, 50 names of friends, family, and fools. That's the place to start. That's what I did back in the day is just what better place to start than people you know. So you start there uh, and then you can add on family offices, high net worth individuals, uh, anybody that you know, and you really just hit the street, start knocking on doors. Like there's, uh, you know, it, it'll take some work, but man, it can change your life. So that's short game strategy. And then long game, as I always like to say, um, one of the two most valuable assets in, in entrepreneurs or fund managers possession are the reputation and their relationships. And so investing in building your reputation and your relationships is really long game strategy. Now I've done it. I've done a couple of things, but I teach you the principle because I want you to be creative. I want you to find other ways that you can implement to improve your reputation in the industry. And when I say that, I really mean your integrity. So improve your reputation, be someone that keeps your commitments, be someone that's open and transparent. I mean, who wouldn't want to work with a fund manager like that, right? Or an entrepreneur like that. Yeah. No, I would. And I'm sure many of you would too. Yeah. So um, yeah, building Uh, your long game strategy and uh, just getting out there and uh, building your reputation relationship is is, uh, how I've done it. Yeah, I love that. I, I think you're going to dive into a lot of these topics on the stage at Fun Launch Live as well. Is, is that yes. going to be the main, kind of give us a, a little teaser of what you're going to speak about at Fun Launch Live. Is it going to be on those two topics or, or more broadly? That's right. So at Fun Launch Live, you can expect, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to tell a little bit more of a story. I'm a storyteller, but don't worry. I will give you some technical things that you could do. It won't just be story time with Ryan Miller. It will be technical things. I'm going to walk you through some of those things um, on how, as I like to say, how I went from zero to one, right? So many of us in this place, we're looking for ways to go from zero to one. Not all of us have this big Wall Street reputation where we just call up all these fund managers. Some of us are just starting out with nothing more than a dream. I'm going to walk you through how to take your dream and actually start raising capital. I love it. And something that you've taught even me and our community is back to that kind of short game, long game is, you know, yeah. when you're building that reputation, building, you know, people want to invest people they, they know, like, and trust. And That's it's right. hard to just cold turkey day one, say, hey, I'm just this kid trying to raise money. Give me money. Everyone's like, no, go away. But if you can, some of the things you brought up to me is get on boards, go speak at your university, go uh, you know, donate time to charities and sit yeah. on their boards as well. Just to, sorry to give away a little bit of your content, but you, <laughs> and that's stuff that I'm like, oh yeah. Like maybe after a year, if yeah. I sat on a few charity boards, if I went and spoke at my university as an alumni, if I went and, you know, gave, um, got these, all these kind of little feathers in my hat, am I more likely or less likely to raise money next year? Probably more likely, right? Which yeah. is pretty quite, sorry to, I, I know I stole some of your thunder. Anything else you'd <laughs> add to that list of things? Yeah. Steal away. Um, yeah. Uh, so sitting on boards, I would say, um, uh, I'll give you a little bit. So this is so simple 
but so profound. I've had so many students say this alone, which was shocking to me. This alone has changed their life. Back then, when I literally had no reputation or relationships, I worked in downtown, very wealthy city, engineers, lawyers, investment bankers, you go downtown, everybody's doing deals, it's bananas. And so uh, during that time, I adopted a discipline, which you need to do when you're starting out, which was three very simple things. And I would challenge everybody listening to this. Uh, we're going to expand on that at the event. But number one, never eat alone. Number two, always ask people about their story. Bridger's really good at getting people talking. That is absolutely superpower. And number three, be generous. So never eat alone. Ask people about their story. Be generous. What you're doing is you're prospecting. You're trying to find out what deals people are working on and then making a generous offer. I'll tell you how that resulted, but only if you come to the event. So I will, I will reveal that, uh, how that works and how that plays out and how to implement those things. But I would say those three disciplines alone uh, can really help you if you're an entrepreneur or an aspiring fund manager. It sounds simple, but I, I actually can attest that's very valuable. Never eat alone. Um, Always ask, ask about people the their story. story. Yep. And then third, be very generous, right? That's and right. I and all of a sudden, you wonder how these people, like Ryan Miller, might. How does he have such a big network and can just call up people? It's because he's done those three things for the last decade. Oh, ta-da! Like all of a sudden, this person has this great network and all these people. And like you mentioned, like we just had Pace Morby. You could probably tell just from Pace Morby's demeanor that he does that. People yeah. like Vina and these other speakers today, like you're like, man, why does why is that person at this area? It's like, well, they've done what Ryan just spelled out those three things, not for a day or a week. They've done it back to the long game. You mentioned for you know some years, and it doesn't have to take that long, but it no. stacks up over. It sounds simple, but it's when you stack it on top of itself, it does really really well. Yeah, you know what, Bridger? Uh, so I, you know, I say I've been doing it 15 years, but uh, if if you weren't, uh, <laughs> you were a kid 15 years ago. But if this was around, if Bridger was around 15 years ago, trust me, I would have got it done in two. But uh, because I didn't have the joy of fun launch, it took me 15 years. But uh, for those of you who are do want to take this serious, do want to come to the events, learn from people. Look, you take a chef, you want to build the perfect chocolate cake. You too can take 15 years to learn the recipe, or you just come to the event. I'll give you the recipe and you bang it out. And all of a sudden you accelerated 15 years. You just mm -hmm. apply these techniques that me, Pace Morby, Bridger, everybody else on stage, we are going to give you the recipe. Yeah, I love it. Now, Ryan, I know you had a gift for people today that buy tickets today. Um, yep. What was that? So I, I put together, uh, it was, it was uh, a little Venn diagram. Now, as I mentioned before, I was a chief financial officer. So I've been able to do massive turnarounds in companies. So one of these things, especially with the turning tides, we have to get our businesses ready. If the tides chair, uh, turn, if the tides turn, we need to operational excellence in how we operate our businesses, especially in venture capital and private equity. This matters a lot. So I put together a Venn diagram that talks about where you should focus a lot of the solutions. Too often, we have a solution looking for a problem. This flips it on its head. If you have a problem, we break it out into people, process, and technology. And so I posted it on my Instagram. You can go ahead and follow me on Making Billions podcast. But on there, there was a Venn diagram that breaks out some solutions to start focusing your efforts, to lean up your operations, and really get that profit uh, that, that you're after. Oh, I love it. So people that join today, you guys will get that Venn diagram from Ryan Miller, which is so awesome. So grab that link right there. Um, I think, yeah, on your screen, Mason will drop it again. Use the discount code to get the discount for today. You guys still get all the cool gifts from all the other speakers prior to this. Um, and I think, let's see on here. Yeah, you get the networking app, cool merch at Funlogist Live. You get all the partner pricing discount um, and the full course that we're doing on, on how we run events, et cetera, all included in all the speaker gifts today, which have been plentiful all right here um, at a, a right around, I think we're a little bit higher than 497 because we sold out those first 25 spots here today. Um, let me go back to Ryan's link here. So grab that link. Um, you guys can go there. Now, Ryan, you mentioned a second ago, what's the best place for people to follow you online? Is it Instagram? Is it your podcast? Where's the best spot? Yeah. Uh, Instagram, uh, making billions podcast. You can follow me. Uh, it's just Ryan Miller, uh, on LinkedIn. It's, uh, you can follow, just look up Ryan Miller. Um, those, those would be good. And then making billions, uh, podcast is all of venture capital, private equity, um, it was just my way to reach as many people and to, um, just help spread the message. Like I said, with Bridger and Mason, um, yeah. we're, we're all here on the same mission. So oh, I love it so much, Ryan, you're set. I'm, I'm so excited to hear your talk at fun launch live. You guys, wouldn't that be kind of cool to come here more from Ryan, anybody in the chat type a yes in the chat. If you'd love to come here, Ryan, et cetera. 
Um, Ryan, you're amazing. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have you uh, in Miami live, which is going to be so fun. And thank you so much. Go follow Ryan online and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. See you there. Um, Bye-bye. Awesome. I, I guess I've realized that the uh, last time I shared my screen, it didn't share the audio, but let me, well, let's see if I can share it again here. Ta-da. We'll see if, I don't think the audio worked again. Let me try one more time and then we'll bring on our next set here. Oh yeah. It's giving me like an error, Mace. I don't know why. Well, we'll just roll with it. Um, Okay. So again, I mentioned all these cool things. Our, our lineup at Fun Launch Live is pretty remarkable. Let me go through here. Um, again, if you guys didn't realize, we have so some of the people that came out today were speakers. We also have more speakers beyond them. So we have Jim Rogers, um, legend on Wall Street. Him and George Soros started the Quantum Fund, one of the most famous funds ever on Wall Street. He'll be speaking at Fun Launch Live. We've got Ed Milet, arguably the number one motivational and, and um performance speaker around the world coming to speak, which is phenomenal. I've heard Ed speak now three times in person. Phenomenal speaker. We've also got, like we had, you mentioned, you met earlier, Steve Larson today. You met Kalo Wolfgram today. Um, Daniel K and Garrett White trained over 10,000 men. Garrett has, and Daniel runs her own independent business with hair salons, et cetera. In- phenomenal, incredible speaker. We did a live last week with him. It's going to be so fun. We got Pace more, which we had on today. Ryan Miller, who you just met as well. Vina Jetty. Um, Neil Bawa, who's going to come to share about all the automations, AI, all that cool stuff. David Yao, who you did not meet today. He went from being a pharmacist to a $10 million fund manager. He literally was a pharmacist, learned how to trade in his debt, time off, went on and now runs a $10 million hedge fund. He's going to come and speak at Fun Launch Live, which is so cool. Ryan Secco, Executive Vice President of Cardone Capital. He came on earlier today. If you missed him, go watch the recording, et cetera, all there. So you guys can join um, here. Mason will drop the link down below or... Um, I think actually that's the regular link. Don't click that one. Funlaunchlive.com takes you to the higher price tickets. You guys today, since you're live, you guys get the discounted tickets today um, only. We are about to close this out. I think we are at 87% sold out of our event. We are at at the beginning of this webinar was 82. Now we're at 87%. (laughs) Um, We are almost sold out of the entire event, um, which is pretty cool. You guys today, all the gifts that were shared, we have um, PDFs. Uh, on how to run your fund, how to do reggae funds, a full pro form of how Kaloa, they're doing $250 million of buying hotels. You get his full pro forma from him. Uh, Vina Jetty, she has her Vina Vault, all of her videos locked up in trainings on how to do multifamily real estate. Um, Pace Morby did a full two-day conference for his investors, $75,000. He's never shared it before. You guys get access to it today. Um, Ryan Miller has his full template that you guys just heard about as well. Ryan Secco has his PDF. Uh, I mean, across the board, we have so many speaker gifts today, which is pretty phenomenal. You guys get all today um, for when you guys buy tickets. So these are for ticket buyers. And again, I'll clarify, if people bought tickets like six months ago, you guys get all these gifts again today, but they are going away. Um, It's people that buy uh, today live right now. Now, here's a question for you in the chat. Um, Was today worth your time? Yes or no? Was that valuable? Wasn't that kind of cool? I uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Yes or no in the chat. Was it worth... and worth your time to come today and spend some time with us. Um, I learned actually a ton. I I actually love meeting those people. I think in the chat, you guys saying, yes, that was awesome. Um, imagine how much that was what two hours. And we had about eight, nine speakers come on live 10, I guess 10 speakers come on live and they all came on for about 15 minutes. Imagine if you came for three days and you were around these speakers and they had their full keynotes and you got to meet them in the hallway, shake their hands, be in person. Do you think it'd be worth it? Yes or no? Come on in the chat. Do you think that'd be worth it? You had today, you kind of got a little nibble of what three days will look like at Fun Launch Live. And I mentioned this earlier. I, I've attended a lot of events. I, I'm a kind of an event junkie, um, <laughs> uh, a recovering event junkie, I guess you could say. I go to a lot of events. We've spent a lot of money on events. I, I, I actually, it's funny. I go to events. Half the time I'm taking notes on like, like the actual speakers. When they say the other half of the event, I'm taking notes on the event. How is the event run? Who's the MC? How are they introducing speakers? What's the lights, the stage? How are they like organizing the check, like check in and check out process? And I've done this for years to take notes. And we've had some people come to our events and say, literally, this is the best run event I've ever been to, the most content, the most value, the hands down best event I've ever been to. We've had, and I'm not doing that to my own horn. I'm saying our team goes the extra lengths to make sure when you come to an event, 
Cause I understand that's a lot of, it's a, you have, your time is very valuable to spend three days and spend some money to fly out and stuff is, oh, it's a lot of time and effort on your part. I want to make sure we deliver 10 X what you came and, and went to. I've been doing events where I, I went and I was like, ah, you know, I didn't, all the speakers kind of were just fluff. And sometimes you ever been to an event like this where they, they say, Hey, you're at the event. Oh, you got to pay us like $50,000 and then you can come to the next event. And that's where we're going to teach you stuff. You ever been to an event like that? Oh yeah, come to the event. We're just going to pitch you the whole time. And then at the next event, you'll learn more. I freaking hate that so much. It's like, dude, I spent a full day or two getting here, getting a hotel, being here, and you're not even going to teach me anything. And if you can tell from the speakers that you heard today, I've prepped all of them. I want nuggets. I want real actionable takeaways, things that you guys can come to Fun Launch Live and you could literally launch an entire fund or your business or scale your whole group just on what you learn at Fun Launch Live. Now, um, questions we get in the chat as well. Like, is Fun Launch Live meant, like, is it for me? Like, what if I don't run a fund or what if I don't even want to run a fund? My answer is this. Do you, <laughs> do you want to know fund managers though? People that manage hundreds of millions of dollars? Even if you're never going to start a fund, if you, do you run a business right now? Do you work for a company that might sell? Do you run a business or work for a company that may sell in the future? Well, most likely you're going to sell to a big private equity firm or go public and sell yourselves to hedge funds and other big venture capital firms. You need to learn the game of funds. Even if you're never going to start a fund, you need to learn and meet these people because you may want to sell your company to them one day. They buy, or do you own real estate or want to get into real estate? You may have to sell or buy from funds. You need to understand the psychology, how these funds work, and even shake some hands and meet some people that run these funds that you can buy and sell and transact from. You'd be surprised. I, I used to think this game of funds was very like zeros and ones. Like, oh, people just do the math. They just run the deals and they just pull the best deal and they buy it and sell it, which sometimes happens. You'd be surprised how much of an inside club lots of deals are. How much, oh, I had a friend that worked here and they got hired here and that's why we're doing a deal here now and I want to work with them. And that's why I heard about this deal. A lot of stuff does is under the table. And I excuse me, not, like not under the table bad, but just they're not publicly listed. They're like off-market deals that people do. Guess who they do off-market deals with? You ever wonder like, man, how do I get more off-market deals? Because usually off-market deals, you can get better terms and pricing. They do it with their friends. People do it with their network, people they know, people they've been around, people they bond to an event and shook hands with. That's who you do off-market deals with. Um, that's one of the reasons I we could throw Fun Launch Live virtually. We could do a virtual event, kind of like today, but make it longer. There's so much value in shaking hands, seeing someone in, in their eyes face-to-face. -face, and it's just, it's been something that's changed my life and Mason's life, our whole business is around doing stuff like this. We continually sharpen the ax. So um, today we are about to close this out. You've got about, I'm gonna put a timer on the screen. You've got about three minutes. We are gonna close out all the bonuses, all the stuff. Um, right now, you guys ready? Boom. There goes the timer. You have three minutes. We are closing this thing out. All the bonuses today, all the stuff that was with the speakers, all that kind of stuff is going away. The, the special pricing for today, um, and go hit that link that's in Mason's, um, that he just dropped, or you can go to funlifestyle.com just general, but I think Mason's click on the link. It's a lot easier. Use the discount code April six. Okay. So use discount code April six. You literally have two minutes and 36 seconds left. If I provide this is a 100% free call today. We should have the goodness of our hearts. We did a free call. If imagine what you'd get if you came for three days and had these speakers plus more. We only about half, that's about, you met about half the speakers today. We have another half that you haven't even met yet that are coming, which I'm so excited to have you, have you guys meet and share and talk to um, collectively manage tens of billions of dollars across their funds. Do you think you'll make more money or less money in the next three to five years with being around those types of people. Probably more, right? If you shake hands and rub shoulders with people that do this kind of stuff, maybe they'll just understand taxes in a way that you don't understand taxes. It's funny enough, I talked to Pace about six months ago and Pace was like, yeah, dude, I, I, he goes, I pay zero tax every year, zero. And it's not tax loopholes. He goes, I just have learned through real estate, you can depreciate assets. And he goes, I pay about zero. And he goes, I make tens of millions of dollars a year and I end up paying zero dollars in taxes. Some of us pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in taxes. And we just, because we haven't learned the game that people that are really wealthy are playing. It's not tax loopholes is written right in the tax code. You can do all these cool things and your taxes just get reduced on where you put your money. If you just understood, understood taxes better, do you think you'll make more money or less money in the next three, five, 10 years? Probably more, right? Um,
So it's our final call here. Um, we are closing everything out. You have a minute 13. We are closing up the funnels. All the discounts will go away. We're actually raising ticket prices to $1,000 a ticket here pretty soon. Um, so go grab your tickets today. I am so excited to hang with you guys in person. We are less than a minute away. So go um, go to funlosslive.com or go to actually click Mason's link. That'll have the special code on it so that we tag you guys so that you can get all the bonuses and discounts from everything today. Um, all that cool stuff. Again, we've got Ryan Seco, We've got David Yao, Neil Bawa, Vina, Ryan Miller, Pace, Daniel and Garrett White, Chloe Wolfgram, Steve Larson, Ed Milet, Jim Rogers across the board. You guys get all the gifts from today. Speakers, course and events, partner pricing discount, exclusive fun launch merch, et cetera, networking app all included today when you buy tickets, which is kind of cool. You're buying a ticket to an event, but you're also buying like three full courses and trainings and videos. I, I don't know if that we just put total value priceless on here. I have no idea. We could probably price it up. It'd be worth like 10 or $15,000 together that you're getting from all the gifts and everything today, which is again, I, my, our whole goal at our company is to just like 10 X over deliver on anything we ever sell. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if somebody felt like they bought something from me and they didn't feel like they got their, at least their money's worth, if not like three or five X their money's worth. That's how we structure all of our deals and everything. That's why to be honest, fun launch has grown like crazy the last two and a half, three years. We pretty much started this company, what, three years ago, Mace? Three and a half years? We've gone from zero to 55,000 people in our courses and programs doing a 2,500 person event in three years. And it's it's not because we're just lucky or whatever. It's because we add a ton of value and friends go and refer their friends and say, you guys got to check these guys out. You got to come to their events because our whole mindset is we want to over deliver. We just want to give you 10 X what you pay for on everything you've ever done. And so I promise you today, if you buy a ticket and come to fun launch live, it will be well worth your money. And I'll even tell that I'll just put my personal name in line. If you come to fun launch live for three days and you feel like it wasn't worth the 550 bucks or whatever, send me an email. I'll send you your money back. It's not, it's not worth, I, it's not worth five. I don't care. 550 bucks. I'll send it back to you. I don't even care. If you feel like you come to Fun Launch Live for three days, you're there, you take, you know, you're listening to speakers. You can't come half-heartedly. You can't be in the hall. Like come and listen and be there. If you feel like it wasn't worth $550, send me an email, send me a personal DM. I will literally Venmo you money or send your money back. Just no questions asked. That's how confident I am. This event is going to be phenomenal and knock your socks off. Because that's what, that's what we do. We, we over-deliver. We go all out. If you want to just come see what $1.2 million looks like at an event, you can come see that too. <laughs> That's how much we're spending on this event um, to make sure you guys have an incredible experience um, on, on everything, which is pretty cool. So go grab that link. Um, Buy.funlaunchlive.com uh, slash special is the link there. You guys can go grab that link. Um, I'll throw it one more type, time on the screen. We are closing up cart though right now. We are closing things. So go check out. All the bonuses are going away. Everything is going away right now. If you guys uh, have been on this webinar, you're like thinking about it, whatever. I mean, it's a, that's your, even if you don't come to the event, all the, just the bonuses you're getting and the networking app and stuff, even if you can't come to Miami, all the bonuses and networking and everything is like well worth 550 bucks. Um, and then let alone coming to the event and everything else there, which is pretty cool, <laughs> um, which is awesome. Anybody in the chat, by the way, come to last year's event. I'll, I'll actually answer a few Q and A's here. Anybody come last year to last year's event? Oh, Dan said, thanks, Bridger and Mason. Just one of the highlights of Fun Life 2022. So last year was riding the elevator with Bridger's dad and talking to him on the elevator and walking to the venue. He is such a proud dad and has so much knowledge. Looking forward to Miami. Yeah, it's awesome. If you guys don't know, my dad um, now retired, but their funds are over $40 billion, billion with a B. Um, he, he's actually speaking at Fun Life Live as well. He'll be speaking um, first day, actually, day one. And so excited to have my dad come speak and on stage. If you want to hear from a guy that, you know, Formerly, they managed, I think when he retired at the time, it was like 30 billion, 28 billion, and then help. He's still on the, he's an emeritus member and stuff and just retired now and just, just drinks pina coladas and hangs out. And he's, he's an awesome dude. Um, you can be a rub shoulders with a guy like that. And he's the most down to earth. He grew up in ghetto North Las Vegas, didn't go to MBA, like just the most salt of the earth guy you've ever met. And we'll just literally stand in the hall and answer questions. I'll tell you a quick story about my dad. We were in, um, so this is a guy again, $40 billion fund. We went to Miami, We, or excuse me, we were in Cancun, had all of our members fly out to Cancun. He literally <laughs> sat, he was the last person in the room. He said, I'll stay here until everyone's questions are answered. And people just sat and asked him questions and the group got smaller and smaller and smaller. He was up, I think it was till 2.30 a.m. answering questions in Cancun, Mexico, just there. And I actually think Vina Jetty was the, la the second, she was there asking him questions, the second to last person there. 
that shows you how much these people care and want to give back. And they're not like some events, the speakers are like, they're so backstage and they can't talk to anybody. Like we're all here in person. I want to come. I want to shake your hand. I want to meet you. I want to take pictures and hang out and just help you with your deals and funds and partner with you whatever you need. So yeah, it's awesome. Um, okay. You guys are amazing. Um, okay. We dropped that link there. Final call. Um, there's the, I'll go down here. We have incredible speakers coming, line up the whole nine yards. I'll go back through here. Let me just go on my screen here. Um, we pulled up earlier <laughs> costs of coming to Miami. I mean, your plane tickets are dirt cheap right now. $129 from Salt Lake city from New York, $29 nonstop flight on frontier. You probably don't want to fly. Let's just say you fly Delta $59. Oh wait, I'm not sharing my screen. Shoot. Let me share my screen here. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. 50. There we go. You could, like, here's a screenshot. This is from yesterday. This is flying in Tuesday, May 9th from New York to Miami. $59. Okay. <laughs> uh, nonstop jet blue, $114 from San Diego to Miami, cross country, Seattle to Miami, probably one of the longest flights in continental United States, $119. You have no excuse, right? If you want to, you know, be that guy that's like, Hey, I'm going to start a fund one day. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, one day I'll do it. People, people talk about starting funds for years and years and years. And then they, all of a sudden they come to fund launch and they join our stuff and whatever, come to our events. And they start a fund like six months. It's not because of magic. It's because they have somebody that keeps them accountable and gives them the step-by-step process of how to do it. Yeah. Launching funds and stuff is difficult, but it's not that difficult. Especially I love Ryan Miller's analogies. Like you can, you can try to learn how to bake a cake from scratch and it will take you 10 or 15 years to perfect the recipe and just get everything right. Or you can open a cookbook from Gordon Ramsay and you can learn how to cook that item in 10 minutes and it's pretty much as good, right? It's hard to be the pioneer. It's hard to be the first person that goes and just figures out the whole thing. But that's why they, they call it second or third mover advantage. You can come and copy all the stuff that the first mover did and then surpass them because you had all the step-by-step. It's standing on the shoulders of the people that come before you. We're bringing all the people that are coming to speak are the people that have come before you, right? Somebody asked in the chat, what are hotel costs? Ta-da, right here. Here is hotels right around our event venue in South Beach, by, right in Miami. We're right downtown. I mean, look at this. Is a, this looks like a pretty nice hotel. SLS, South Beach, Miami, $181 a night. I mean, like, you have no excuse. I've flown, I've flown to events. It was like $1,000 a ticket you know, the, the, like, uh, per night. It's like $800 a night. If you want to come on a budget, you can come on a budget. If you want to go advance and fly private, cool. Do all that too. But I'm, what I'm telling you is you have no excuse. <laughs> Don't tell me it's money because money's not the excuse. I, I love Steve Larson's story. He actually traded. He was so broke. He before He's like, I'm coming to the event. I'm going to figure it out. I have a why. I'm coming to the event. And so he said, I'm going to go in the Facebook group before the event. And I'm actually going to just solicit my services for like, I'll build you a funnel. I'll build you email marketing. I'll help introduce you to investors, whatever you need, but just pay me like, or just pay for my ticket to come and follow us live. That's what he did. He worked for his ticket. So don't, don't sit here and tell me now. I know most of you guys that are watching this are like, it's money. It's not the problem. It's more. It's time, right? Time is a big, our most valuable asset we have on planet earth. If what's going to save you more time, learning how to build that, bake that cake by yourself or following a recipe, what's going to save you more time? Probably the recipe. Now the cook, the cookbook's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars, the cookbook, but it's going to save you 10 years of your life. There's a great book that Dan Martell just wrote uh, called buy your time back. It's the concept of every time when you have money, you can, you literally buy time out back to your life. If you can pay someone to come mow your lawn for $40 to mow your lawn, that saves you an hour of your time. You just bought back an hour of your life. And all of our time is finite. It's limited on earth. We're all going to die. But if you can spend $40 and someone else mows your lawn, you just bought back an hour of your life. If you can hire an assistant that's going to go save you eight hours a week, you just bought eight hours a week back of your life. If you can go to a three-day event and learn 10 or 15 years, what it, would, what it would take you 10 or 15 years to consolidate the knowledge down to three days, what would save you more time? Because some people are like, well, I'll just go on YouTube. I'll go to YouTube University. I'll buy courses and stuff, which is great. And we do that as well. But how many courses or things have you done on YouTube that you, you have to sift through all the crappy content? You got to watch the ads, all that kind of stuff. And you spend a hundred hours 
to find two or three hours of really good content. It's actually going to shape and change your life. You spend a hundred hours to find the two or three hours. What we've done is consolidated five or six or 10 years. That's why I love reading books. Books consolidate someone's decade down to like 300 pages. Like you go read like these incredible books from these incredible business people. It took them a decade to write that book and have the experience. And you get to learn all their lessons in 300 pages and a couple hours on audible or reading. That's how you buy your life back. An event is like a book on steroids. Every speaker is coming and sharing for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. The last five or 10 years of their life in 45 minutes. The best nuggets that move your life forward and you buy your time back. And all of a sudden you have the tools, the process to go build that cake in the next couple of months rather than the next couple of years. Does that kind of make sense? There's, it's not magic why we launched 120 funds out of our group last year. 120 funds. It's not magic that we have dozens and dozens of people winning this award on stage this year. This award is for anyone who has over $10 million fund that's come out of our group. It's not just magic. It's because people had a system, a formula, and they go, oh, I'm just going to copy the steps and get the same result. Does that kind of make sense? So that's that's what we try to do at Fun Lost Life. So all that being said, um, yeah, go check it out. And by the way, um, some of you talked about like their spouse or their business. I got to talk to my business partner. Uh, go, I would, what I like literally, so um, sorry, let me tell you a quick story. My wife was all skeptical about me being all like online and like doing videos and stuff. She's like, I don't want to be, I don't want you to do that. Like, I don't want you to be online, like have our face out there and then people follow us. And like, I just don't, I don't want to be that person. I was like, Hey, I totally get it. Cause it's kind of weird to have people like DM you and know like your life and what you're doing every day and stuff like being on social media. And so what I did <laughs> is uh, I went and bought her a ticket to an event. It was an online marketing event. I bought the tickets were a thousand dollars a ticket. So I bought two tickets. And actually, I bought one for Mason. We bought one for Mason too. So we had three tickets we bought because I wanted my business partner to come too. And me and Mason want to go together. And I, I brought my wife. And my wife, she's like, What are we doing? I'm like, We're going to an online marketing event. And she's like, Okay. And I'm like, It's going to be, it was in this beautiful location, like, like Miami, beautiful location. We're going to go. We're at the pool, little beach, but I want you to come and just attend some of the sessions while we're there. And so she's like, Okay, like vacation. Like my husband's like, Treat me. I said, Honey, it's like, it's, it's your birthday gift or Valentine's gift or my birthday gift, whatever gift you want to call it. Let's go to Miami. Let's have a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So we hop on a plane, we fly out there. She actually had a, she was like, this is so fun. She was so excited that I like surprised her with this gift of this ticket. Go to this event. And I'm like, okay. And she was like, I'm just gonna go to the pool. I'm gonna hang out, like whatever. And I said, cool. Just, if you can, just the first day though, come to the event with me, at least for the first couple hours. And she came in and sat down and her eyes like went like this. She was like, whoa. And speaker after speaker came up and kind of kept talking about online marketing and like building a brand online. And gave her the vision of what we were going to build at Fun Launch. This is before we had launched Fun Launch. And it was funny. She, I'm like, hey, do you want to go back to the pool? She's like, no, I'm like, I want to stay. I want to learn this. I want to learn what business you're doing. And she stayed all day. It was like the first night we stayed really late. It was like, I don't know, it was like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. She stayed the day two, she came all day and day three, she came all day. And at the end, there was like this big motivational speaker at the end. And she was like crying and running around. Like, and she was like, that was the, it was actually, it was Tony Robbins. Actually the last speaker was Tony Robbins. That's who it was. So Tony Robbins is the last speaker. And like, we're like crying and hugging. If you've ever been to a Tony Robbins event, it's just insane. And we come home and she's like, or we're on the plane ride home. And she's like, I get it. I get what you're doing. And she's like, you have full, like I'm, I'm, I'm on board. And my wife is my best business partner of all time. Mason's amazing and everything. We're amazing business partner, but my wife is my best business partner of all time. And she's like, I get it. Let's do this together. And I was like, okay, we're all in. And all of a sudden now my wife was aligned with me on what we were doing. Does that kind of make sense? And uh, it totally changed our trajectory of our business. And, and it's like, funny enough, like I tell my wife, like, hey, we're going to throw an event called Fun Launch Live. This is last year. We're going to have like 25, 1200 people come. And like, this is last year's event. And she's like, cool, I get it. Like I'm on the same page. And I was like, awesome. And like, my wife is like my greatest team member of all time. And it wasn't just because of happen chance. It's because I, I helped her almost get indoctrinated into the same business that I wanted to be into. So if you're in the chat and you have like a spouse or a business partner or whatever, I think it's highly, highly important that they are on the same wavelength and page that you are. That they understand if you're going to go launch a fund or raise capital, that sounds really scary to the outside person. But when they come to an event like Fun Loss Ivan, they're immersed. I'm a big believer in immersion in being all in on something. I served a, an LDS mission in Taiwan and, and I had to learn Chinese. And it was it's way easier to learn Chinese when you're immersed. I went to Taiwan, I learned Mandarin Chinese and I was, because I spoke it every single day. Every time I ordered food, I had to learn. I had to like 
be there. That's why immersion is the best way to learn something. That's why I love events. You have three days of immersion in funds, in syndications and raising capital in this game. And if you can get your spouse there, your business partner, and all of them can get on board. And I promise you, we go deep and we have a lot of fun and it's high energy. It's not boring. And they're going to leave that event being like, whoa, okay, honey, I get it. I get what you're doing. So I'll leave you guys with that. Um, Grab that link. Mason will drop it. We're going to close it up right now. For people that joined today, congrats. Welcome in. Um, We have a lot of people that have joined today. We kept selling out our things and um, we will give you guys all the bonuses. So look out for an email with your tickets and your bonus and everything. And you guys can go start booking your flights. Flights, I don't know why are so cheap right now. Everything is really cheap right now on flights. So grab your flights. I'd call them like right now. Grab your flights out to Miami. Make sure you have those reserved. Grab your hotel rooms. Everything's super cheap right now. And uh, we are so excited to see you guys um, May 10th to 12th in Miami, Florida for Fun Launch Live. All the speakers today, et cetera, will all be there um, speaking and sharing and being on stage. And I'll be there speaking and, and sharing. We're going to go very in-depth on funds, et cetera. Cool. You guys like that? Sound good? Any, any last things, Mace, before we close it up? Okay, we're feeling good. All right, final call. We are closing things up. Um, you guys are amazing. Thanks for staying to the bitter end so much. Alf- uh, Alfredo, thank you so much. If you guys can in the chat, just say thank you to Mason behind the scenes. Mason's been working his butt off back here. Um, <laughs> if you guys can just say thank you to Mason and our whole team. We have a whole team. Like I know I'm on camera, but we have a full team behind the camera here at Fun Launch that like does incredible stuff. Um, you guys can just, you know, thank you guys for giving them a huge thank you. They're amazing people and working their tail off to, you know, get everyone here and have an incredible experience. We have a full events team that works like tirelessly to give you guys cool merch and discounts and like, and like on stage to have the lights and that we have full led screens and everything at the event, like to make it amazing. So you guys are awesome. Congrats. I'm so excited to see you guys in person. Um, as well. Um, one last thing, let me check the Q and a here. We've had a few people asking us like, hey, how do I learn more about Black Card or other stuff? If you guys want to book a call with our team, um, I'm actually going to have Mason grab a a call link. If you guys want to book a call with our link, um, you guys can call in, or actually we have a live number right now. If you guys want to call in and learn more about Fund Launch, how we help people launch funds, et cetera, um, or about the event or tickets or whatever, um, or how to buy bulk tickets. Like we had one guy buy like 30 tickets for his whole team. (laughs) If you want to buy bulk tickets, you can just call in. We can figure out like a a pricing model that works for you guys. There it is there. Mason just dropped it. So book a call with us, funlosslive.com slash call. Click that link. um, Or there's a live number right there in the chat, 435-244-3532. Go grab that link um, or just call in live. We have literally people right by trained by me right outside my office that um, will answer the phones. They, they're very smart on funds. They know how funds work. They, a lot of them have even uh, started or partnered on funds as well. And so they know the game and they're trained by me on funds. You guys can talk to them live person right now on our team about launching your own fund, tickets, et cetera, all right there. So grab that link, um, go book a call. I, I don't know how many call spots we have available. There, there's, uh, there's not a ton. Okay, they're actually full. A bunch of people have asked for calls already. So calls are full, I think, because today's Thursday, Friday, but you can book a call for next week or just call in live right now. I hope maybe somebody's live. Hopefully somebody answered the phone unless these guys are all busy out there. But call that number in live right there, 43, or to, oh, just text it. Okay, text that number. If they don't answer, just text it and they'll call you back like right away. 435-244-3532. Um, these aren't people like out of the Philippines or something. Philippine people are great, but these are people trained by me in my office. It's not some random person. These are people trained by me in my office answering the phones and talking to you. So they're not just some random person. So um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty fun. There's a last call. Use discount code April 6 to buy tickets. And you guys are amazing. Thanks so much for coming on today. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. Let's see if this will load real quick. There we go. Fun Launch Live, Miami, Florida. I'm so excited to be with you guys. Thanks so much for people that joined today. I'm I'm just, I congrats to you for making the leap, making the jump, swallowing that pill a little bit of like, oh, should I go? Should I not? Should I dedicate like a, a couple of days to this event? Congratulations to you guys, man. Congratulations to you guys for coming to the event. And I promise you it'll be well worth your time. I, I will leave you with that promise. It will be well worth your time. You're going to leave the event going, wow. That I should have, the ticket should have been $5,000 or $10,000 a ticket. That's how much I would have paid to come to this event. It's my promise to you guys. If it doesn't feel that way, send me an email, send your money back. Like I literally, I, I don't care. I, I want, I, and I, I'm pretty confident, almost hundred percent confident that you will leave with that feeling. Okay. Y'all are amazing. Final call on the links. See you guys later. Peace out everybody. Bye.